next uh we'll go to Sansel and we haven't had Sansel here for months and months and months it feels like uh Sansel how are you I'm doing pretty good um I'm pretty excited for this panel I've been arguing with people on Twitter for the past couple of days about uh like electoralism and stuff so I'm pretty passionate about you know getting people out to vote so this is the sort of conversation I think is really important right now um do I just like shut myself out basically right now? Uh, I, I I play video games very badly, and uh, I like to argue on the internet. I'm Son Soul. Thank you so much. All right, next we have uh, Genevieve. Um, Genevieve, thank you, thank you uh, for being here. Genevieve uh, reached out, wanted to be a part of this, uh, so I was very happy uh, to have them. Genevieve, uh, you know, introduce yourself to the audience and to, to me. <laughs> Hi, yes, thank you so much for having me, Prime. This is my first time on one of your panels, but um, I know we've been kind of chatting for the past few weeks trying to make it happen. I'm stoked that that it's actually time right now today. So that's awesome. I'm excited to be here. Um, and some familiar faces, which is cool. Um, I am the best place to follow me. I'm most active on Twitter. So that's going to be Madam underscore Genevieve on Twitter. And that's going to have in my bio, my links to anything else that I'm doing online, but I definitely update that more than anything else as far as my schedule. So go follow me there. Okay. All right. Uh, next, let's drop down to Jason Society. Jason, thank you uh, for coming through. I've, uh, well, you were here like two weeks ago, I think, right? It wasn't, it wasn't too long ago, but Sure. Um, Jason Society, big member of our community. We're always happy to have him around. Um, yeah, thank you for coming through, buddy. Yeah, sorry, I got some people just uh, kind of get trying to get out of the way real quick here. But um, anyways, um, I am Jason Society, Jason underscore Society on Twitch. Jason Society, all word, one word on Twitter. I talk politics, uh, talk a lot about cannabis, and I host a weekly panel show called StonerCast where I bring on some of your favorite streamers like Smoke Weed, and we uh, talk about all things weed. So you can check us out um, on Sundays at 5.30 p.m. Pacific, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much. Next, uh, last but not least, we have my man MVP Joe Lewis, uh, who is like Prince. He goes by like symbols, apparently, uh, now. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Joe Lewis, for stopping by. Like, he hit me up, hit me up just before we, we got started here. So I decided to bring him in because, well, He's always a fantastic contributor. So thank you for being here, buddy. Yeah, sorry for the late um, reply. <laughs> um, it's it's prom season, so it's been pretty busy, but figured I'd spend some time arguing on the internet <laughs> in the downtime. You, um, uh, I was going to ask, do you have to like chaperone people? Um, so there were two events that I DJ, two of which I chaperoned. Um, next weekend, there's five, so that's kind of cool. I guess it's a word mm. you can use. Um, so it's pretty busy, and then like it's also a wedding season at the same time. So events are coming back up, and then marching band season's back. It's it's just it's fun. I didn't think this through when accepting gigs during the pandemic. So <laughs> oh yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll push this date back. Yeah, you, we can do this in 2022, and now it's just kind of colliding into, which is good. Like I'm glad to be back to work. That's fantastic. Um, but obviously, like, how am I supposed to argue on the internet when when you had to work? Like, you know, like oh. lefties and getting jobs. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but either way, um, I'm glad to be here. Follow all these other people. I'm partnered. No, it doesn't fucking matter what I do on this platform. So glad to be here either way. Um, we leave uh the uh the capitalism to like conservatives, right? They get to be successful. We argue on the internet, all right? That's we're changing the world. That's what we're doing. Um, hey, okay. You can't be a leftist if you aren't poor, right? Isn't that what they Absolutely. say? Hearts and minds. They can come. Uh, so, all right, let's uh, get started then. Uh, I will read off the topic, which, as always, I don't have in front of me. Oh, uh, here it is. Um, <clears throat> a Twitter user uh, named uh, Fauna of Flora made a post uh, that accused lefties who are anti electoral of being just as dangerous as conserv conservatives. Uh, they claim that they are not allies and occupy racist, transphobic, misogynist, and misandrist space. Do you think this criticism is fair? Is there any reason to believe that anti-electoralism is a valid stance? And if not, is a person who shuns a ballot box actually complicit with bigots? Yeah, so um, this uh, comes by way of our great friend Sonia. As she, uh, <laughs> as she had noticed this post, she had responded to this post. Um, and I think it's a, a super interesting... And Amanda is the one who tagged you in it to get the attention on it. Oh, this, if she... 
tag me like on Twitter, then yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I responded, I absolutely not and then know. Amanda responded to me and tagged you. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I am yeah. not gonna know then uh, if it's the, <laughs> if that's the case. Yeah, because uh, I'm not on Twitter like that. True. But, <laughs> but the point is, is that yeah, uh, this person had a very bombastic post. Um, and it, uh, got a lot of attention, and I wanted to explore this topic. Uh, I actually might be like the big dissenting voice here. Uh, I'm just. <laughs> I think I might be the big dissenting voice here, which is good because I'll take you all on. It'll be pretty easy for me. Sonia, uh, we'll start yeah. with you. All right. Um, yeah. So when I saw that post, uh, so Fauna of Flora, first of all, I, I like them a lot. We engage a lot on Twitter and do back and forth and stuff and retweet each other. Uh, but I disagreed with them on that particular post, at least the way that it's, it is painting people. I do think that there is a sort of complicitness to some degree, though. Like, in, I wouldn't say that people are occupying like a racist or misogynistic, et cetera, place in the in, here, you know, wherever it is that you live, whatever government. I would say that I, what I decided to, to kind of do was rephrase it as if you are, um, if there is an election that you can participate in and there is a conservative they're occupying a position in government that is up for re-election or a conservative running for that position then you are enabling whatever um harmful policies it is that you are having to deal with so um by not by then by not participating in the electoral process and um you know Voter disenfranchisement is a is a big deal, um, and voter apathy is a big deal. But we can't allow that to just prevent us from actually taking action in the electoral process, because that is enabling whatever harmful uh, electoral representatives um, or elected representatives are in the system, and whatever policy, whatever harmful policies they're enacting or advocating for, et cetera. So that was the way I wanted to to paint it was narrow it down more specifically to what is actually happening there, and that's that's my position on this one. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, let's go to Night Hills. Yeah. So uh, uh, just to lay my cards on the table, uh, coming up uh, or putting uh, coming up to my radical theory, I realized that there's going to need to be a way to incorporate electoralism into this because you need to be able to occupy land and the established states uh, need to respect the sovereignty of the experimental ones, uh, just as much as the uh, experimental ones need to respect the other people who live on that land. But uh, that does mean fighting from within. I don't think that means, you know, overthrowing the system in the uh, physical sense. So I would imagine that's some sort of voting reform, uh, voting more and more for people who uh, particularly support the idea of, uh, you know, letting these communities flourish and maybe even supporting them so that way they can be true experiments, but not going to get into that. There's a lot of caveats to this, though, when I say I lean towards it, because uh, on the negative side of things, electoral politics does sometimes for force people to vote against their issues, especially in a two-party system. Uh, th that is a huge negative for radical politics. I think the U.S. needs to work on a way to uh, get uh, further left parties more popular. Sorry, the American left does. Uh, and same here in Canada. I don't think we're, we have some energy for the NDP, but that's more like uh, a washed out workers party, in my opinion. I think green is like the thing we should be focusing on. But aside from that, uh, the, the main issue is, uh, generally speaking, the majority isn't going to reflect the issues of the left. So there's some point where we need to either find a way to change that or to diverge, and that's really difficult. Uh, but in favor of it, you know, there's a lot we can do. And most importantly, I think it is a, a massive tool for making sure the pathways to more revolutionary societies is open. Uh Yeah, so I am, Allah forgive me, a liberal. So I really enjoy voting as a way for uh, people in the in a country to express their desires um, and have their values kind of lived out in the um, electoral system. Um, I think that uh, by 
withholding your vote or by I, I would even go a step further in saying that voting for a third party, uh, at least in the current paradigm that we're in right now, um, is implicitly voting for whoever wins, whether it's a Democrat or a Republican. Um, and if you're in an area that is either purple or red, then you're basically just ceding a vote to Republicans. Um, so I would say that we need to get more people out to vote. If you are anti-electoralism, you're like incredibly fucking cringe. Um, revolution isn't going to happen. It's especially not going to happen in the United States. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure that we'll get deeper into it when we get into open discussion. I'm Genevieve. I think that voting is such an important right that we have and a privilege that we have really to exercise whenever we can participate in an election. Um, I think that in this tweet, you know, they specifically call out people who identify as being on the left, but then choose not to vote. And that's really confusing to me, honestly, to to claim to be supportive of a political side or or movement. You want to benefit from their work and their efforts, but then you do nothing to support it. Um, definitely feels hypocritical to me. I think actions speak a lot louder than words. Um, voting is something that's super important, not only on a national level, I think even more so for a lot of us on a more local level as well. And I think that that is one thing that flies contrary to people arguing that, you know, my vote doesn't matter. Um, you really can make a huge impact on your local government by making sure you're involved in those elections as well. And that is going to have an impact on you. Um, so I definitely would encourage everybody to, who who is able to vote and to make sure your voice is heard. Uh, I, I mean myself. Uh, let's go to Jason. I apologize. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. I, um, you know, I read the tweets and I thought, you know, wow, these are the, the language is pretty fucking um, um, vicious. You know, I mean, uh, they're really going in. And I guess I can see a perspective to that. Um, I am very much in favor of electoralism. I think we need to vote. I think it's very important for the process of trying to make change because I think what you have is you have a system where even if we're gonna, if we do all the other things, like let's say we, we protest, let's say we organize, let's say we do all these other things, to what end? Because we are still in an electoral system, we still need to vote because that's the system we're in. You know, you, you're not you're not gonna win anything if you're not playing the game at all. And uh, yeah, I, do, I, do I think that there's complicity when people don't vote based off of their their beliefs about the government or, um, you know, their apathy towards the government. Um, I mean, I think there's a, a bit of complicity, you know, some passive complicity there. Sure. Um, I, I think it behooves us all to vote and I very much encourage people to vote on a regular basis. So, um, yeah, that's where I lie with it. I, I think in a sense, they're right. I, I don't know that I would go, be as harsh as they were about it, but I absolutely think they're correct. And finally, Joe Lewis. I think that there's a lot of problems with electoralism in the United States, and I'm not going to fault anybody who chooses not to vote. I it's There's always this sort of like individual level on these approaches to these problems, and I it, it's, the same, it, it's the same critique that I have with this tweet, where it's like, oh no, I'm not going to vote. Well, you're a fascist, and you're a racist, and it's like, okay, and nigga? Like, what are you going to do about it? Like, you're going to do shit. You're just going to be upset, and then you're going to go on to the next thing. The thing that I'm very concerned about, and I guess is like kind of thing that I'm frustrated with, is that when you have so time and time again individuals that are on the ballot that do not represent the ideals, the the policies, the practices that you care about, what are you supposed to do? And then what happens is you get a lot of the liberals who go for sort of like the pragmatic argument of like, well, you're voting for the lesser of two evils. And it's like neither of these individuals represent my values they, they don't represent what i stand for so why should i be forced to to vote i personally consider non-voting a decision that you can make and it's a totally fine decision now something mm -hmm. that i would totally be in favor of supporting is the expansion of understanding why people are not voting that is something that doesn't exist in the electoral process right now at all where somebody chooses not to vote 
there's no sort of follow-up to understand why they're not participating in the process in the first place. There could be a lot of reasons for that. It could be due to what I'm talking about in terms of ideas and values. It could be have something to do with, with their work situation, like something to do with their current life situation. Um, but we see time and time again that like if we want to extrapolate this tweet, there's a lot of people who aren't voting. So there's a lot of <laughs> racist, transphobes, fascists, and that's not necessarily productive. But I also think it's unproductive to just tell people that they should vote no matter what without taking an honest observation of the electoral process and how we can make it better. Um, but again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste time trying to like like well if you're not voting you're part of the problem type of shit like if people choose not to vote that's a prerogative but i'm more concerned about why people aren't voting and why the electoral process is so fucked in a vast majority of um states so. yeah um and i'll give my opinion i'm closer to a show on this one um in that uh i think that it's easy to uh, you know point fingers at individuals who aren't voting. Um, but I, I I feel that oftentimes the onus needs to be on our elected officials to convince them to vote. I think that for many people, they're uh, uh, not for all, but for many, uh, they're making an honest assessment of the choices they have and they find them lacking. Um, and that can be for a variety of reasons. Um, but it's well, we just say, hey, you just got to go to the ballot box. Go to the ballot box for what? To, to get what? For what results? Um, I, I, I think uh, if the best you have is to say that things will get worse otherwise, right? Like the other side is just so scary, it'll get worse. <laughs> You're not going to get very far with that. Uh, but yeah, I win everyone else. Um, all right, so let's go to Azonia and then Ninetales. Uh, yeah, so overall like i would say definitely don't demonize the abstainers i think that's really important i think that's part of the problem that we've had with a lot of animosity and a lack of willingness to understand why it is that people are abstaining from votes in the first place there's a lack of empathy and there's too people are too quick to kind of say oh you're the problem like i remember that happened when uh bush won in 2000 and i remember that when um when uh, Trump won, the same kind of thing happened, just demonizing abstainers and demonizing third party voters. And that's not solving the problem. That's simply just creating more animosity and more division and not actually recognizing why it is that people are wanting to vote for you in the first place or vote for your, your, your candidate in the first place. And so it's very important to make sure that we don't just simply dismiss these things as you filthy abstainers and instead try to understand what is causing the, the abstaining from voting. Uh, Nine tails, please. Hi. Yeah. So, um, first of all, I do want to say, um, and this is partially in response to Jason's introduction, uh, when I say that I lean towards it, I don't mean under our current system. In fact, I, ha I have a huge issue with how um, people are expected to vote in a system that doesn't represent them. Uh, and I, I do think this is contingent on the idea that they are able to vote for their interests in the first place. And that's commonly not the case. And that's why saying, well, this is the way the system is, isn't really a good argument for the people who aren't voting. I, I think the left overall just... Uh, does a bad uh, bad job uh, talking to voters who have abstained, talking about it. That uh, tweet that this is referencing is a good example. I don't think that's very constructive criticism. I do think the context of this from my best guess and just from seeing the overall backlash on Twitter is actually how in Ontario, the, the Conservative Party basically won the provincial elections, basically kind of like a landslide. And it was very sad and a big uh, swing for us in terms of our elections and a lot of people abstained. And I was very let down by the way the left talked about it. Like not everybody's terrible, but we do have to look into these factors like the material conditions and stuff like that. So as it stands, just to be clear, when I say I lean towards it, um, that's just like when I'm sitting on the fence, but in general, like I, like, I am not ha happy with the way that things are at the moment at all. I think the left needs to do, uh, to build off of Madame Genevieve's point, um, uh, we, the left needs to do more to actually build uh, things like on the grounds for uh, so that way more people will vote and also influence more politics. 
and just do a better job supporting narratives of like politics that exist. I may not be a good example of that, but I'm not trying to be a politician either. Um, my last point is that we do have to think about this as logistics. I don't think that just because somebody uh, doesn't uh, do electoralism in their uh, activism, that doesn't mean you know they're not doing a good job. There's a lot of ways that you can do what this activism and expecting people to focus on both. And that doesn't mean voting as far as voting goes. That that does kind of make sense for uh, to expect people like to do that in a vacuum. Um, but as far as like you know, just because a leftist cause isn't trying to promote voting for a particular candidate, they're not necessarily doing a good job. And we do need to focus on caring for the underclass and promoting them in our voices, just as much as we, fo uh, if not more, than we focus on electoral politics. Oh, and my chat uh, pointed something out. Uh, I was going to say it too, but they just reminded me. Uh, voting, uh, not voting is not the same as, uh, as uh, voting for no one. Uh, when you actually submit the ballot with no one on the ballot, just to be clear, statistically, that is more significant than simply not going to the polls. Uh, okay. Sorry, what was that last part? Could, could you... Yeah, I don't oh, understand. It, it, it makes it, it, it's more meaningful for people who are abstaining their votes to actually go to the polls and mark no one on the ballot than submit it. Wow. Because then Why? there's at least a ballot to be counted. And you, yeah. you're, you're, yeah. Because you get turnout. And in addition to that, it shows the lack of faith in turnout as opposed to just being you know apathetic or uninterested mm -hmm. so, so like if you're how does that how does that even affect anything like, like if you're a researcher day. yeah if you're a researcher and you want to find a link to current trends or like think like you know uh popular dynamics in in society and you want to say like look here's evidence that people actually feel disenfranchised from the voting system then uh, an empty ballot is more significant than no vote at all because there can be many other material reasons that people just don't go to vote but it doesn't mean that they're not politically active in their minds okay this or, is what or, i want to know from all the people that keep on saying that people aren't being represented um we live in a representative democracy right people who go to the polls elect people that go into office and then you know, vote on things that broadly uh, uh, align with their values. So in, in like what way are y'all meaning people aren't being adequately represented? I don't See, my understand problem that with, statement. Like, yeah, my problem. You, that's why I'm there, asking. Is there, a, is there an absence of understanding that people advocate for a particular policy and certain candidates might not even advocate for the policy at all? Like, I don't I understand what that says. What were you trying to say there? Can you rephrase yeah, that? So so can I just quickly jump in? We can also describe this as a conflict between the voting body and their interests and the interests uh, proposed by the people who are up for election. Okay, but the people that propose things that are up for election, like broadly speaking, they will vote in their, like what their constituents want them to vote for, right? Do you, Do you think with that? that there's a difference between constituents and an electorate in this case? Can you just, can you like make the distinction for me? I'm asking you if you understand a distinction between constituents and an electorate. That's my question. Well, I'm asking you to like explain it to me because I'm not well, in this. I'm at, so do you, so in the context of what we're try, talking about. Try, asking, try your best. Like, what do you see as a constituent, and what do you constituents? See as an electorate? So, electorate would be the people that are voting in constituents of the people that are within the district of the people. Is that what you're the distinction that you're making? I'm trying to ask what you believe those terms are. That's what I I just what told you. you. What, so let's start. Let's start with an electorate. What do you believe an electorate to be? Uh, people that go out and vote in their interests, probably. Well, it's okay. eligible okay. voters in electorate, right? So it's well, basically consider... anybody who has the opportunity or has the option to vote. Right? That's the electorate. I consider evangelical Christians as an electorate within the Republican Party. Do you agree with that statement? Sure. Now, constituents, in this case, we'll use this. We'll, we'll make it. We'll make it similar. We'll make it the same thing. The constituents and electorates, it doesn't matter which term you are. It just means that a, a political interest group or some interest group within a, a, a voting base. So we'll use that as a definition. Is that okay to proceed with that idea? Sure, yeah. Great. So if evangelical Christians do not feel that the Republican that is currently on the ballot supports the policies that they want, what do you believe that they should do? Should they still vote for that Republican? 
or should they choose to vote for an alternative candidate that supports the things that they're interested in? Well, if a, if an evangelical uh, is like going out to vote and they want to see their values kind of um, uh, enacted into law, they should probably vote for whoever is most aligned with that or vote for someone in the primaries that is uh, the closest to the um, to their values as possible. Right. What if that candidate isn't within a third party? And what if that candidate is within a third party? Yes. Or isn't? Is. Okay. Let's say the candidate that is aligned with their views is within a third party. Well, the, I mean, they can vote for that person, but, like, effectively, they're throwing their vote away because we have a two-party system that we have two parties that are in power right now. Right? Okay. So, because two people, two parties are in power, that means that people shouldn't vote for candidates that... Well, if they care about changing that... things, yeah. I don't under I'm I'm not that's not tracking for me. You're gonna have to really walk me through that. Okay, well, so if you actually like if you understand the fact that like the Green Party doesn't have any power in the United States really, and if you recognize that the Libertarian Party doesn't have any power in the United States right now, right? Then you, you pro and you're like then you're essentially throwing away your vote. But again, I I I I that's not tracking for me. Why? So I asked you specifically, like it so you feel that people a group groups of electorates in this case we'll use evangelical christians should vote for candidates that encapsulate their values and beliefs do you agree with that if the what i'm trying to say is if you are like trying to enact change there are specific values that you want right and you recognize the fact that there is a two-party system right now in the united states right then you should probably vote for whoever is closest aligned to your values um, given the choice between two options. And if though, and if nobody is aligned with the two options, they should not vote for a third party candidate. What's more, what should they do? Well, I just vote? said, if consider, you, what I just said was what, they should vote for consider, who is what do you consider, the closest. What do you consider, what do you consider valuable for them? Voting for a candidate that lines up to their beliefs and what they advocate for or not voting at all? Because those are the two options that you're currently presenting. I'm saying they, vote for whoever has you know, like the is the closest to your set of values, right? Within so the, the two parties, the, though, correct? Yes, because otherwise you're not going to be you're not going to get a libertarian elected. So what is so so how does so if an even if evangelical Christians believe that neither the Democrat that's being that's being brought up on the ballot and the Republican that's being brought up on the ballot represent what they want. Why should they vote for a Republican? Why should they vote for a Democrat? What value is there? What value is there? Well, at the very least, you're going to be voting for someone that is uh, closer to your values and probably isn't going to vote against, uh, like vote to um, uh, enact things that you're like diametrically opposed to, right? So let's take the, I'm, for I'm instance. I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble with this proxy. I can thing. see. Just, I can see that. Like, yeah. What's what? Yeah, what is it, the trouble? It doesn't make sense. I'm just trying to understand where where it's coming from. Like, why why is the closeness? Like, I'm saying that there is no there's no equal interest. There's no interest that evangelical Christians in this hypothetical have with this with either candidate. So, what's this proximity? So you're saying that I I don't understand in the in this hypothetical how there can't be one candidate that is closer to their values than the other. We can move on from that. I, I don't know how to engage. Because I'm because I'm asking you. Because I'm asking you, right? If you are... Uh, I'm, okay, go for it. Go it doesn't for matter, because if neither candidate fucking is expressing your interests in these two parties, and there's a third-party candidate that does... Fucking vote for the third party candidate. Okay, but let's okay, let's take a let's take an act, let's take an example that we will let's more go. let's like, let's take an example for uh that we would all be like a little bit more close to home that we probably all care more about, right? Let's talk about like trans issues, right? Right now Republicans are in power at the state level in a lot of different states and they're enacting all these anti trans bills, right? Now, Democrats might not have like the like full best based opinion on trans people, right? But generally speaking Speaking, a Democratic politician isn't going to do anything nearly as egregious to trans people as a Republican would. So if you withhold your vote as a as a Democrat or you vote for the Green Party, right, someone who's not going to get elected into office because most people don't either line up with the Green Party or with the Libertarian or whatever party, right? Um, if you vote for a third party, 
they're not getting elected. You're basically voting for whoever wins, right? Well, that, that's that's a great that's a great hypothetical because I have spoken to a lot of trans individuals, and they've articulated to me in in different ways that certain people within my own with within my district and do not represent trans people. Period, whether it be Democrat or Republican. So if you are trans. And if you don't have somebody that you feel is representative of that, what should they do? And then if there's a third party candidate that clearly in their messaging and in their rhetoric overtly has trans people in the forefront, are you saying that they should not vote for them because the because it's a two party system? Or are you saying that they should vote for them? I'm trying to understand where you're at. What I'm saying. Okay, so, so, so if there is if there is a if no, no, there is I'm, a party, I'm gonna, really... you, I'm gonna let you finish. I'm just gonna say I'm letting everyone know that after that, Zonia, uh, Genevieve, Nine Tails, Jason, just letting them know. Go ahead, Sansa. Okay, so if there is a Democrat that is not explicitly in favor of of trans, like a pro trans legislation, right? But there is a Republican who is explicitly anti trans. You would probably want to vote for someone who is more in line with your values, even if they're uh, if they're agnostic on it or if they are neutral on it or whatever that's better than being like on the opposite end um uh, of the spectrum on it and being like anti-trans right so so you're saying within the two-party system that we're under a trans individual should vote for in this case in this hypothetical that we're laying out here a democrat over a third party candidate that overtly recognizes them within their politics yes Is because the stand? because that politician isn't going to be elected and actually represent them so why are so then my question to you then is what do you think is more valuable here trying to uplift third party candidates so that they're competitive or catering to democrats because third parties are are inoperable apparently. i would say what you, that what's the, more valuable to you? i would say it's more valuable to vote for democrats because like number one if we're trying to uplift third party candidates we're not going to do that by voting for third party candidates in the current system right now there, we don't have uh, we have first past the post still like going on we don't have uh ranked choice voting we don't have anything like that so without those things a third party candidate isn't going to be elected what party is more likely a what, to... well hold on really quick sure, what party yeah. is more likely to start advocating for like ranked choice voting or some other system of voting that would be more inclusive to third parties well right now it's going to be more progressive democrats right rather than republicans how can you quantify that statement because like, we can look we at we, this advocacy? sure we can look at people like aoc and ilan omar who have expressed um interest in that sort of thing we can look at basically any like progressive like at the state level some some centrist democrats i don't know like at the state level which ones have expressed interest at that because i don't know all politicians i don't have all knowledge of all politicians in my mind but generally speaking if you're going to be looking to increase the power of third party candidates you're going to want to uh, vote for someone that's going to get rid of first past the post uh, enact some kind of ranked choice voting etc cetera, etc cetera. what has their argument of third party or really like ranked choice voting looks like like what have they explicitly said because you mentioned aoc um, and someone else I don't remember, but well, they I don't have a yeah. ranked choice voting in New York yeah. because of AOC championing it, right? Sure, that's that's one candidate, but I want to know what the language of that looks like. What well, I don't have like? an exact quote on me right now. I know that they've been um, at, at least on uh, like outwardly supportive of the idea of ranked so ranked choice voting, right? And if AOC sure. got it um, got it to happen in New York, right? I don't see why we wouldn't think that this is possible. Sure, and I guess to, to close out this oh. this exchange, the yeah. the thing that I'm kind of stuck on is, I I don't see how you can say that somebody who or or tell any individual that if there's a candidate that they that directly aligns with what they believe in, that they shouldn't vote for them and they ought to vote for something within a two party system. I don't understand that level of advocacy and maybe like we're not we're probably not gonna have time to get into like where that comes from but i'm, I'm good with it for now thanks for the uh, back and forth oh no, no yeah absolutely all right so we'll go to uh, zonia genevieve uh nine tells jason i'll probably take a turn afterwards uh because i thought some interesting things happened here um can you hear the background noise on my end no like a popping sound oh fantastic because that fucking happens all the time oh, whatever zonia please <laughs> yeah so um i think sansol one of the things that 
is, um, and why, why I think maybe Joe using evangelicals is sort of a bad example, is because uh, with, I think. Okay, I'm going to go way harder now. I'm closing out the fucking um, game. Marginalized groups and minority groups, there's a bit more of an uh, awareness of a lack of representation and more extreme lack of representation in general. And so definitely feeling in a situation where it's like, okay, well, nobody represents me. I may as well cast my vote into another party uh, because there's somebody over there who at least represents me and in my community and my family and such. And so there's a more willingness to do it. And one of the things where the um, like Republican party gets a lot of its strength and power in, in voting and I didn't and realize that Joe was going to be so fucking obtuse. Very Holy fucking shit. I have never, I haven't watched him in such a fucking long time. I didn't realize he was going to be like this. Holy fucking shit. Represented by the candidate. They'll oftentimes fall in line behind the, the, the uh, Republican candidate just to get the win. Right. Uh, but you have a lot of underrepresented groups who are, who are tend to flock more toward the left to find some representation there. And if they don't find that representation, they're going to want to look for that representation elsewhere. And so if it's not in the dominant party on the left, they're going to look to third parties and sometimes even move to the right if they can find a representative over there who at least seems to be trying a little bit to represent them, even if it you know, oftentimes turns out to be pandering. So, um, which unfortunately, a lot of the representation of marginalized groups in the Democratic Party tends to end up being just very hollow pandering. And so by the time the candidate gets into office, they don't make good on the promises. All the stuff that they were trying to promise for marginalized groups suddenly becomes a, you know, an afterthought with no priority to it whatsoever. So the, I can't really fault anybody for basically going and saying, I'd like to give my support to somebody who at least tries to represent me. And if enough people do that, it will eventually bubble up a candidate somewhere along the lines who may win in the, the electoral process. Uh, but yeah. Well, if they I wanted to vote it's, for it's someone that one. was going to represent them, then they would probably vote for someone that actually has a chance of winning, right? Like if we're going to be looking at someone like Jill Stein, who has zero chance of being elected, right? If you vote for her, you're not, you're not going to get that, that person into office. Even if they do have um, your favorite policy at the forefront of their mind, it's never going to be put into policy because that person's never going to see the Oval Office. They're never going to see the Senate. They're never going to see uh, Congress. They, they might see it at a local level. And you can advocate for those sorts of things at a local level. I think that's a lot easier, right? But you would have to get some sort There's... of grassroots... Uh, uh, grassroots movement to get that person elected, especially, especially at the lo uh, local level. That could actually lead to these third parties getting some sort of electoral gains um, at the federal level. But right now, voting for a third party at the federal level is just throwing your vote away. Well, so the catch, though, the part that I don't think you're seeing is that depending on where you live and, you know, what your issues are that you have to deal with as a, you know, a member of a marginalized uh, minority group, everything may be really, really bad. And it may look like, well, there's nothing's really going to change anyway. So I'm going to put my vote where I think there's somebody who at least try to change things, even if they don't have a chance of winning. So if you're a trans woman living in a rural part of America that is not very progressive, and it's dangerous just for you to go outside and you can't even get a job, you know, like a normal everyday job because of the the kind of um, hostility you have to deal with. Well, then you're not even going to be motivated to vote for a lukewarm, pandering Democrat who's never actually going to implement any policies to make your life better. You would rather just cast that vote for somebody who, if you happen to get lucky, they they win you know, the election. And but there's no luck involved. That's the problem. It's not like you know, they, they, you get a whole bunch of votes and then they take all those votes and then they put the names into a hat and they pull out one, right? Well, it's not yeah. like you're like increasing your odds by voting for a third party, well, right? You have to read a certain threshold. Luck. 
right? But right, but that takes time and advocacy, right? And in the meantime, while you're making you're doing that advocacy, that. right? Well, if when you're your thinking all about survival, well, if you're thinking about it enough to where you're like, okay, well, this Green Party person has trans uh, trans stuff at the forefront of their mind, right? You you're probably like politically knowledgeable enough to know that this person's not going to see any. Uh, it, they're not going to see the office. They're never going to be elected, right? So why if you're, you, why do you keep catch twenty two though? Sorry, I got I got to let some other people. In. I just want to understand where I come to. I, I got to I got to okay, let some other yeah, people. I mean, go, look at yeah. every his, uh, every election in in like U.S. history uh, or not U.S. history, uh, at least modern U.S. history. Let's let's move on because we got a, a few people waiting. All right, so um, we'll go to Genevieve, uh, Nine Tails, Jason. I'll jump and take a uh, turn after that. I think when it comes down to the the general election, it is really important to look at the two parties that are involved and choose the one that is more closely aligned with your values, even if it's not perfect, because those really are those are the two choices that that are really going to be valid in this option. I think that it is absolutely respectable and valid and something I would encourage for people to do in the primaries is to vote with your beliefs, vote for somebody who might not be the obvious choice um, at that point, because that's where your voice is going to have more of an impact and you're going to be able to hopefully, um, as part of a group who also supports that candidate, um, influence the ultimate um, candidate that goes on to represent the left in this instance. Genevieve, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. So in my district, District 12 in New Jersey, um, we had two candidates on there, Bonnie Wasman Coleman and Darius Mayfield, one of the Republican primary and the Democrat primary. They both ran uncontested. What it, and, and what I'm gonna pose to you, if somebody believes that Bonnie Wasman Coleman of the Democrat party does not represent them, in an uncontested race, what do you think they should do? And then also, what would you want to see? And I guess, what's your thoughts overall about uncontested races in the United States? In general, I would say if you live in a district where somebody is running uncontested, then that's an incredible opportunity to figure out what what person in your community could represent you and could run for that position as well. And, and I would challenge everybody to look at that. Um, you know, you you see someone like AOC who decided to, to run even though she was an unlikely candidate and she is now having a huge impact on us. I think that in general, um, if there is an uncontested election, that that just should be even more reason for people in the community can, who might yeah. not support that candidate to get involved. Can I load this a little bit? Yeah. Um, so in District 12, Bonnie Wasman Coleman has defeated every Democrat that's competed with her definitively. And we're talking in the 80 to 90 percentile. So it's either it's greater than 85 percent in every single primary that she's run. So what should a Democrat do in a situation like that where the incumbent has that much political power where any Democrat that's posited gets defeated definitively? Then I would try to have a group effort to pressure her to consider whatever it is that you're disagreeing with her on. So I think that that should be a dialogue that then if if nobody, if 85 to 90% of the Democrats of your group are in support of her, then she's, she's going to have the majority vote. Okay, let's start a dialogue now about how she could represent the remaining 10 to 15% of people better. And I think that that's something that anybody who's a representative should be concerned with. Okay, sure, if there's sure. a th if there's an uncontested election, then why are we even talking about voting? Then just tell someone from the Green Party to run. I I want to. Okay, that was very stupid to say. So I'm going to walk you through why that was very stupid. <laughs> I, I, um, yeah, please explain. I walk, walk you through to the best of my ability. Now, just maybe because I missed something a, you said. But... Just because a part, just because a candidate is on a ballot in this situation doesn't make what I said any less factual, where in this case, Bonnie Wasping Coleman rolls over any candidate that's put in front of her, Democrat or Republican. Additionally, and maybe this is what you're trying to get at, and maybe I'm being, being uncharitable here, is that you, do you feel that 
by having a third party candidate in the situation of two uncontested races that would change the outcome is that where you're coming from with that okay are you talking about in the primaries maybe i missed a a, a key part of this but well, we were talking about, about primary races, and there's a, a lot of races in the United States, even this past primary cycle, that ran uncontested, and currently even in this cycle run uncontested. Okay, well, I, I guess, like, if you want to, if you want to talk... this is the House of Representatives, by the way, to be yeah. clear. We're not talking about local, we're not talking about local politicians and just doing in their state Senate and legislature. These are candidates are going in the Congress, running uncontested. Okay, well, if there, if there's someone that's running uncontested, either, like, try and get someone that... Uh, either run yourself, get someone that uh, more aligns with your values to run, or I, I guess like at that point, if it's uncontested, you can vote third party because it's not going to be it's not going to be that much of a problem. I don't really care what people do during the the primaries because that's where you're selecting for. Well, this would be the general, like right, like at this point, you're talking about the general because they've already. Oh, that's ran why I'm confused. Well, I'm, I'm I'm trying okay, to figure so out me, where we're where we're general, talking so about. Maybe I'm just confused. Oh. That's why I'm trying to clarify. Yeah, so, uh, we can't take too long because I do want to get to Nine Tails because he's been waiting patiently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So I guess. Um, I'll, I'll organize this thought and come back to me. That's okay. fine. Okay. All right, cool. Well, let's go to Nine Tails, uh, Jason Society. Um, then uh, we'll go to um, our friend Joe, and then I'll take a turn after him. All right, go ahead, Nine Tails. Uh, you're muted, friend. Okay. Now my hotkey worked. Um, I just want to say I love having Joe on here because he is like, making sure that I don't have to make a lot more points than I normally would. Every time I'm thinking, maybe I should write down a response here. J Joe's on it. So thank you, Joe. Um, I do still have some points left. Uh, first of all, the, the first on, so this is going back a bit, but the financial interests of politicians do not often reflect the full interest of voters. Asking them to compromise probably makes them feel like shit. And I don't think it actually like gets people to vote. Um, two more points. Uh, telling uh, people that every vote counts is hyperbole and probably also does a better job. Um, oh, sorry, uh, that uh, does a better job shaming people uh, or potential voters, most importantly. Uh, actually, what I had written down uh, for Sansa was asking them to compromise will make them not want to vote in this case. So I kind of got them mixed up. And I actually, I think it's better to focus on undecided voters than it is to worry about the people who didn't vote. Now, I'm not saying there's not a lot of people who don't vote, but I think we're ex assuming a lot of things. Like, first of all, uh, how Sansol assumes that politicians just instantly reflect the, the voting body uh, or the interests of the voting body when also they clearly worry about funding their campaigns just as much. Uh, and the second one is like, uh, we take like, we, there's we don't know what the like the the limit the minimal limit is for actually getting everyone to vote in an idealized system so it you know i don't think it's zero percent of people won't vote in the perfect system i think even in a perfect system some number of people won't vote and we have to ask ourselves how far are we from that and when we do see trends away from from a uh, majority of people voting how can we explain that better than just like oh you did a bad job you don't care about uh, these politics or whatever. Okay, so I I don't think there's been any person um, in in U.S. history who has tried to run on getting all the people who don't vote to vote for them um, that has ever been elected. You can look at Bernie Sanders running for the president. You can look at uh, there's 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 like a lot of examples of people who are trying to uh, you know get some. Um, silent majority of people that just never vote to come out and vote, right? That's just, this isn't something that happens, right? Um, but to what you said about like the financial interest, I, I, it doesn't seem like financial interests play that much of a role in terms of getting people uh, or getting Congress people to vote against their, um, I'm going to use constituent, I hope that's okay, their constituents' interests, right? The people that vote for them generally align with the kinds of things that uh, the the corporations or the businesses or the institutions, whether educational or whatever, um, like the, the people that fund those politicians generally align with those uh, politicians in the polity anyways. So um, I, I, I don't really buy the financial interest thing anymore. Um, and then you said the... Every vote You're not counts. From Arizona or West Virginia, apparently. Oh, oh, I, I'm not. So, 
Um, so, every vote. Uh, well, I mean, it seems like Joe Manchin and Cinema were were elected by the people in their states. Uh, Joe uh, Manchin, I, I think, I, I unless something Cinema's changed. Campaign. I worked on Cinema's campaign, and she had a lot of progressives, and she made a lot of progressive promises. Yeah, and, and Cinema got elected. Yeah, and, and Cinema, Cinema, so, well, really quick, so really quick. To say, cinemas, that, to say that politicians don't look at their own financial interests when they make these decisions and won't vote against their constituencies. Well, we can look at Cinema's poll. We can look at. We can look at Cinema. Wait, wait, wait. I just, I just really, she, okay. she said I would two like things to, respond, to me. By the way, <laughs> well, so number one, Cinema's poll numbers have gone like drastically down because she's done that, right? So she might lose her re-election campaign. Um, but uh, like Mansion seems to be doing just fine with West Virginia. So unless something has changed since the last time I looked at his poll numbers, it's been a hot minute. All right, but the the people of West Virginia seem to like uh mansion for the things that he uh uh represents kind of more economically left uh in terms of like us left right while still being um socially conservative now to the every vote counts thing are you saying that every vote doesn't count because that they do trump trump lost by the thinnest of margins in 2020 to joe biden in georgia all right every vote there counted like if you're gonna bring up trump though that kind of like begs the question did every vote count when he ran against hillary yes and I'm just because saying it's he hyperbole. won i'm not saying it's not Michael, true. Trump, nor's not here we, we, we won't get the banger state response okay <laughs> sorry I'm, I'm not saying it's i'm not saying it's not true i'm not saying that they don't count i'm saying the the range at which we say it counts makes a i think it does a better yeah. job shaming people who don't vote like i said well like if you're um, well i think that we should shame up, people that don't up, vote yeah, like, absolutely because, because we have a whole finish my response please yeah, yeah. yeah but we should shame right. these people that don't vote no i think there's smarter things to do uh but bringing up the financial interest uh i would be like i'm pretty confident in what i'm saying particularly because america does a great job like pushing out anti-corporate candidates who refuse to take lobbying money it's just a, such a rare thing and I think the best explanation for that is because what do they run against? Incredibly well-funded campaigns that have super PACs that are funded by uh, unknown black uh, dark money donors. Okay, but if we look at someone like Nina Turner, who has lost every like campaign attempt in in Ohio, right? Like she, no, out, I'm not saying she money out equals winning. That's a different argument. What are you saying then? I'm saying that for a lot of these candidates, it would be political suicide in America's current political system to simply shirk their political interests for the sake of their uh, of the of the constituency they want to appeal to. Meaning yeah, I mean, that like, taking yeah. taking money is necessary to to get elected or yeah. and that this is this is particularly why I'm against saying like I'm for electoralism in, in the US's current voting system. Because it just doesn't, it simply won't represent the people's interests so long as this is the mechanic that dominates things. And I, but I it do seems, think it really but it dominate. seems like the the people's interest is being represented. If if uh, if it was just money, or even if Democrats it was mostly, the hold on, really quick, the time? Uh, really quick. If you think that like money is like a major component in winning a, a campaign, thinks it is too. She literally says people come in to be progressive and they leave, uh, or or they 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 wind up being people who only care about uh funding their own campaigns if if money was like the the number one or two reason that people get re-elected then why did nina not nina turner not win either of her her bids for um like, fuck i can't Again, remember that, that's that's a straw man. Have uh, much money wait why is it a straw man i'm directly asking i'm asking you a question wait, 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 wait. i can answer this 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 it may have done with the fact that there were over 16 people on the ballot when she ran in 2021, I may have been, it may have been even be 17, if I'm remembering correctly. And we've seen time and time again, that larger bases of people that we vote for can sneak in Stardust certain politicians that might not viewers. be within our best interest. We saw this in the presidential election in 20, Stardust what was it? It feels so far viewers. away, right? 2016? 24, 24, <laughs> Where, 20, sorry, can you repeat the last sentence? I had a TTS go off. It's okay. Um, Man, people should give me money. But give money to Freems because he sells amazing lotion and he's stuck in a state with Mansion. He's a cucky, cucky, cuck boy. And it's like really sucks because he will never support trans people because his daughter is big pharma. So it's really unfortunate that the, the trans folks in West Virginia will never get their 
their mind centered, but it's very good that they at least be moisturized with lotion in the back. Um, but, the point that I was trying to make that, is that what do those points have to do with, uh, with well, each other? I mean, that wasn't a point. It's just that I'm trying to I'm trying to shill for for Freem's loose lotion. But oh, gotcha. For lar- so Nina Turner, just so that we're clear, she lost by a little under five thousand votes in 2021. But when we also look at the entire race, there were multiple people on the ballot running for that seat. And we've seen time and time again that the only people who are who benefit from large electoral bases, large bases of people to vote for are extremists, literal fascists and incumbents and people who have the the financial incentive to just maintain the status if quo. extremists so, are are like a big voting block then why don't socialists get elected I'm, into the i'm into not Congress? saying hold on wait can you i'm not gonna ask a question i'm just gonna ask a question that, I'm, that, I'm, that i wanted to ask you earlier um so just so that i'm i just i know i want to see exactly where you're at and then that's going to help i think a lot of people understand where to engage and it might make prime argue activate his moderator slash debater arguer in his in his heart of hearts so what political party do you support democrats gotcha so what is more valuable for you as a democrat voting for your values regardless of party affiliation or voting for someone within your political party that can win in the primaries i would vote for someone that uh is closest to my values if they didn't uh end up winning the primary i would vote for the democrats as a uh as basically a holding action for uh to put my values on hold rather than have them be pushed backwards in terms of progress how long would you put your values on hold as long as it takes because if i am going to if i see one party is apathetic towards let's say let's say one party is apathetic towards um uh, trans people and one is actively against trans people well i would rather us like stay where we're at with uh with trans issues where we're at right now rather than backslide into like actively like kicking down people's doors and detransing them right where we're at with trans issues right now depends on where you are where you live of right? course but for, we're like we're also looking people, at like local and federal and yeah right. so so, I mean, uh, so just to be some people in some places where they live you know any day could be a death sentence for them or you know being um horribly violently beaten um you name it so it, it looks very different from the perspective of someone who has to deal with those kinds of stressors on a daily basis right, right but even if they but even if we're going to take that right if we were to have a Democrat in those areas, it would be better to have a Democrat there than a Republican because a Republican will start putting into into law, you know, crazy shit like, um, fuck Texas. I know this got struck down, oh, but no, Texas no, had the. I, I'm sorry, you you were like clipping like a motherfucker. What? Yeah, I think you're on the wrong mic, Jason. It's because his his his, his microphone isn't moisturized with cream solution. <laughs> right now, it's very it's very crackly, very ashy. So if and... we were, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if I we just were to, ask w- w- I was, so if we were to like look at the the kinds of pills that Republicans are trying to put into law, like in Texas, where they literally said that trans affirming healthcare is child abuse, right? A Democratic, uh, like the way the Democratic Party is right now, they're not going to put that sort of thing forward. Are they going to like? put forward something that's like ultra pro trans well it kind of depends probably not in texas but are they going to do something that's uh like actively anti-trans probably not i guess yeah, if, if so I could two things and question. then i'll, I'll get can i because okay. yep. i'll close out and then i'll let you oh to play basketball um so just so i'm very very clear here i i understand this might be the the son son soul intervention hour for for um liberalism and i really much enjoy the, the inshallah that let's we might go, go through I enjoy the metamorphosis that we might go through, but I want to make sure I'm very clear here so I'm not misrepresenting you. So you are willing to vote for Democrats who will vote, who might not be encapsulate of your values as a placeholder for as long as it takes. Yes. Like if, if I'm looking at like the consequential, like end result of what we're talking about here right it would be better for us to stay where we're at where we have at least the option for trans people to go and get um health care right rather than backslide by allowing republicans to get voted into office yes but you have a lot of so, you have a lot so of democrats so that are acting so as republicans so, right now so, like, then so the, the final okay can you follow, wait hold on follow. i just want to ask jason jason can you sure. point to me one democratic uh 
representative right now who is pushing anti-trans legislation in the way that Republicans in Florida or in Texas or in any of these states that are uh, run by uh, red governments? Um, like they don't you- have to. It's their it's their it's their it's their passive disinvolvement that's the problem. Look at Henry Cuellar. He's a perfect so I just example. so I just said right. I would rather have like passive like like doing nothing about what's going on right now right like we're and not like we're, continue to well, cause the problems and no yeah, they can all hey, nothing hey jason did you know hold on to perpetuate the issue hold on right? jason did you know that if republicans lose elections to democrats then they can't put forward legislation but if we're not putting forward legislation to protect these people then we're not doing then we're not either. doing it then we're not moving things then forward we're staying where we're at I, but I saying think, where we're at is not is not tenable. I think Jason, you have to move in a direction. Okay, right? so like, let's like two you plus can't, two you is can't, moving forward. You can't Hold on, Jason. People to do nothing. Okay, so Jason, Jason. So if we have like is, two plus two, that's like moving nothing. forward, right? That's but guess what? The public forward. sentiment but if is going to have... change around those people, and they're going to lose votes. And then guess who's going to win? The Republicans are going to win. Right. Well, that's I, what's going to happen. Well, listen, because dude, listen, dude. Not, I agree. I agree with so you. you can so what we would that, do? Also what we would let, do? Oh, yeah. so, 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 I'm saying, Sansa, so, so you can respond yep. to that. I also want nine tests to be able to get in a question to you. And Genevieve, I'm not sure if there's anything else you wanted to add, but I'll make space for you as well. So, uh, go ahead. I'll finish uh, responding, Sansa. Okay. So, if we have, let's say, like right now, we're at like number two, okay, and electing a progressive will get us plus one. Now we have three in favor of trans rights, right? But if we elect like a, a centrist Democrat, it's plus zero. Now we're just still at two. If we elect a Republican, it's minus two. So we go down to zero, right? So electing a Democrat who is apathetic towards these issues would keep us exactly where we're at, where at least there's still the option for trans people to go get health care in some way, shape, or form, right? while uh, allowing a Republican to get voted into office would be actively moving us back. I would rather okay, us stay like where we're at thing. than move back. Here's you can still thing. vote People for progressives. Are only going to you can put still up vote for progressives. For you can so still long. You can, well, People that's why I'm saying. Well, listen, Jason, so I agree long. with you. I agree with you. That's so why we should. Well, Jason, listen, I'm not saying that. Work. I'm not you saying know? that we should You're only gonna end up with that Republican one I'm not way or another. Do you think that the end result is always going to be Republicans? Because if so, then why the fuck did you say that we are in favor that you were in favor of electoralism? You're not in favor of electoralism. You want a revolution. Absolutely. I'm no, you're not, because your what I'm trying to say, uh, Jason, what yeah. I'm trying to say, wait, I'm just, the, this is the last thing, literally last thing, literally last thing. And I can't fucking uh, uh, vote for a third party. So This, this is what I'm saying. Up. The last, <laughs> okay. So also, finish your point, then I want to go to Nine Tails. Okay, I'm not saying that you have to vote for a centrist Democrat. I'm saying that we have primaries so that we can elect people who are more progressive into the Democratic Party, because right now, the Democratic Party has the actual option of being elected into office, right? The Green Party, the Libertarian Party, they're not going to do it, all right? You can elect more progressive Democrats so that we can move forward, right? But that's, like, if we had the option between a centrist Democrat and a fucking Republican, vote for the centrist Democrat. So Okay, let's the, go to, hold on, sorry, sorry we gotta yeah. go to the nine toes. Yeah, the ball. Uh, Genevieve, if you have anything you want to add, I'll give you that space, then we'll go back to uh, our friend, um, uh, uh, black guy, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so yeah. Am I right? Jesus. First yeah. point, then my Cop question. Game, <laughs> uh, first of all, I think it would be way stronger to actually uh, disenfranchise people from the neoliberal uh, nightmare we currently live in, and make them not want to vote Democrats, and make them want to vote Green Party, uh, and better represent mm-hmm. Green Party issues. But for so so going back to our very fractured debate about uh, whether or not these parties are rep- represent the interests of the voters. My biggest question to you, and I think the number reflects uh, the way that you think, so I'm, I, I'm just curious, I'm not going to follow up or anything. Uh, what percentage of people running for office would you say are populist running on uh, no corporate donors? Uh, probably very, 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 very low. Like in the uh, 10, 20 percent at the at like the max 20. Like if we're talking about like local elections Ooh, and state right. elections and federal, I'm going to say like if I'm being like ultra generous. Yeah, I'd say like 10 to 20 percent, but it's probably lower than that. Yeah. But that's why like, hey, guess what? If you want those kinds of people to to run and get elected, you have to fucking vote for them. Right. It's I, not, I would agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah so that's what I'm saying. In this case, like, the left should for, be getting to 
yeah. getting people to vote for that. Go to the so. go to the polls during the during the primaries. You can vote for those people. If they don't end up making it to the to the um you know the end of it, right? Fuck, I'm I'm losing the word because I'm t- arguing with like five people. But um, like if they don't make it to the general election, well then fuck. D- are you going to vote for someone who's going to at least maintain like the the ship where it's sailing right now, or are you going to vote for someone who's going to like go like hard to the right and like actively be against trans people? Uh, uh so let's. Uh, I guess she, are you going to respond, Nitos? Or she said she wasn't. Yeah. Or yeah, if you want to, you can. Okay. I, I just thought okay. she said she wasn't going to. Okay. All right. Well, then let's go to. Uh, I mean, if Madam Genevieve does want to go, she can totally t- start talking right now. And I'll. If up. you have a quick response to to what he just said, go for it. Um. Okay. And, yeah. And then I'll go after you. Yeah, it'll just be a quick response. My problem with your solution for uh, taking no steps forward is that does eventually lead to issues that the left that become out of control for the left such as not having a voting system which represent that represents the people okay do you think that i'm advocating for voting for people who aren't going to move us forward no okay cool okay let's go to uh, a genevieve thanks um i think santo's making some really good points here i think that um Again, we have the chance to really express our beliefs in a more nuanced way in the primaries, but when it comes down to the general election and really a two-party decision, um, choosing the lesser of two evils seems like it's always going to be better than choosing the greater evil. Um, And I guess I'm just sort of confused, Joe, as to what you think not voting is, is adding how how is that helping the situation or what are you hoping to accomplish by sitting out the vote i think that if you do not believe that a candidate on a ballot is going to be representative of your values i totally understand why you would make the decision to not vote now the 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 thing or i guess the theme that i'm i'm feeling right i'm just I'm just vibe checking okay it's vibe checking is that that type of political action is unacceptable for some people that regardless of who is on on the ballot that you ought to go out and exercise this and to an extent i am not fully on the side of it but i would say something i would support is the expansion of people's ability to participate in the process without participating so that looks like the idea of like voting for no one. I'm closer to supporting that, like the idea of like writing no one or the ability of sending, even something as simple as saying by sending back this ballot blank, you therefore are choosing neither candidate or like by just like hitting enter on the ballot, you're choosing not to vote for either candidate. I'm closer to yeah, that. Okay. President. How many, how, what percentage, more. what Can percentage I, of the values oh, do they have to line up with you for you to be okay with voting for them? Let, 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 Gen- let Genevieve respond. I can, answer, I can, I can, I can answer that. That's a and, really, because really no one's really ever going to line up with that. 100% of what you oh, believe guys, in unless guys, you guys, guys, running. Guys, hey, 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 we got it. We got to get some more in here, right? So you can uh, answer that quickly, Joe, but I do want to get Genevieve. She's been waiting very patiently. Why is that? I'm going to ask you with a question. I want you to be as honest as you can with me. Why is that question important to you? That you felt the need to feel so strongly charged about asking it? Me or Genevieve? To you, Consul. You got really, you reacted a very, like, aggressively towards the, yes. the, the idea okay. that was I, I don't so want to. Where does that come from? Sure. I want to answer this, but I don't want to, like, step on Genevieve's toes because I think she also asked you a question. My, 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 so the reason I ask this, because you keep on talking about people uh, voting their values, right? But no candidate is going to be 100% in line with your values except for you, right? Unless you like find like the perfect candidate. So like how, what percentage of it does it need to be is, is why I asked that question. I think that generally speaking, even like socialists uh, would be more in line with what Democrats want, at least on a social level, than, um, than with Republicans. So. Sure. Well, it's going to 
matter from policy to policy, right? Like, for instance, no, but I mean, like a, in totality. No, I, I don't think people are, are 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 thinking in totality when they're when they're voting for something. They have certain things that they feel very strongly about, and there's certain certain things that they don't feel very strongly about. So, and for some people, the bridge might be cannabis. For others, the bridge might be um, actual trans exception, acceptance, like the expansion of healthcare, the expansion of counseling services in, in public schools. Um, for another person, it might be guns. <laughs> like the, the window of tolerance for, for individuals is gonna vary from topic to topic. And for some people, they have a very small window of tolerance for people who do not support these particular policies. That could be through the direct like adversion of saying, I'm not voting for this at, at all, fuck the blacks, but it might be something a bit more um, elusive or passive where like, I'm not gonna say fuck the blacks, but I'm not going to in introduce any type of policy that's going to actually push black Americans forward regard like in different levels of economic status or social status. Like those, those two things, and the things I'm describing like like exist. Like the window of tolerance is gonna navigate differently. And also for for politicians, their window of tolerance and their window of of openness towards topics also has that type of bubble. Unless you disagree with that. I think that what we have to look at or something that we have to contend with is the fact that number one, a, a candidate is also going to be voting along party lines a lot of the time, right? They're going to be like, if their like big thing is they are pro trans, they're also going to be voting along party lines or whoever they caucus with um, on economic issues, right? So that's so, Ilan Omar, but yeah, keep going. Uh, well, I mean, not, not on not on every single <laughs> issue, honest, not on yeah. every single thing, but like there generally we, speaking, there there's, not there's, generally there's, speaking, okay. like we're going to be seeing people who don't know en enough about like a specific topic, so they defer to what their um to what their party uh would say to vote for uh to get through their initiatives that they've um laid out. Uh, so like those sorts of things are something um, that you need to take into consideration because all of these politicians are in islands, right? They're, they're part of a, a broader political party that is going to be, um, like in favor of like a certain set of policies. Now by voting in more progressive people in the democratic party, we can move the democratic party further to the left. Right. And then we can see those things be part of like the broader democratic agenda. Right. We can see great, uh, great strides in how far we've moved the Democrats left over the past, like four to six years. Look at uh, the, the kinds of things that the Democrats have adopted since Bernie started running and since AOC uh, got elected, since um, Ilhan Omar and the squad and all of them. Uh, they've adopted the $15 minimum wage as part of their party platform. They've adopted, uh, you know, a, a, a lot, at least a. Um, uh, a public option as part of their platform, or at least some kind of uh, like healthcare reform. Um, these it are feels sorts of like things. The squad, though, has honestly been rejected by the Democratic Party more than it's been accepted. How could it? How could they be rejected when the the policies that they got elected on are now part of like the broader Democratic like agenda? So I, I don't this. think it's. Yeah, I don't necessarily think it's productive to to like go down this road because politicians for the a the aocs of the world like the new representatives they're not pushing policies forward like let's make this like as clear Wait, as we how? possibly can but they're not pushing policies forward i can i can i can clarify this statement right how many policies and bills has aoc introduced since she's gotten elected I don't know like, off the top of my head. The I'm talking about the, the broader democratic the agenda, right? Sure, and I can, I can answer that for you. The introduction of policies for new congressional members and new Senate members is very, very uncommon. So for a lot of them, they're going to have to cater to whatever the party platform is, because Democrats have a party platform, Republicans have a party platform. If those things don't exist within the, within the policy, like the, their platform, the party platform, it's going to be very difficult for them to make any type of, of shake in, in the system because they're just going to get hit with either overt obstruction, like not being on certain committees, not getting tapped for certain positions on committees that might have them lead to coming to the things that they want to advocate for, 
Um, but but we've but or, we can directly like point so towards the fact that wanna... these people are on committees. Number one, it's not like the squad is completely like uh, like rejected by the Democratic Party. They're not on any committees. They haven't like changed the party platform. We can directly look at the policies that are like more in line with progressive uh, progressive policies. Fifteen dollar minimum wage, uh, shit like that. We can look at the the like acceptance of like gay gay rights and in, in like the gay movement. Um, LGBT movement uh, within the Democratic Party as uh, as a like a really big one. Like people didn't vote for Obama in uh, 26 or I'm sorry, not 2016 in 2008 because he was going to, you know, save the gays. But at the end of the day, like the 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 right for gay marriage and a lot of the the rights that gay people have now are as a result of Democrats being elected in 2008 and two, in 2012. We can look at the election of people in 2018 as pushing the uh, the party further left. The only way for these policies and the like broader agenda of these uh, of these political parties to move further left or further right is for people to uh, elect people who are further left or further right. That's how these uh, that's how their agendas are set by having people within the party like. Uh, uh, like vote on what the party platform is going to be. And if there are more uh, progressives in office, then there's going to be a more progressive democratic um, platform, right? I have, to, I have okay. two points and then I, I'll, I, I'll shut up because okay. I, I've been two speaking. Points and then Genevieve yeah. has been a living waiting for. Yeah. I, I, think <laughs> I apologize. That the, I think the idea that LGBTQIA plus individuals are seen and representation is is bordering Dungeons and Dragons because if that were not the case, if it were the case that like the, the conditions of these individuals is and Democrats can, can take that as a victory, then we would have seen the passage of the equality act years ago to this point. And we still haven't had that passed. So I don't think Democrats are the, the shining example of people that we can say like, Oh, these things are because of them. Like, yeah, they, they recognize that, minorities and disenfranchised people exist but when it comes to when the rubber hits the road of policies then they're they're pretty much very very much like one plus one equals zero and for you you laid out that that's okay that you're totally okay with the equation equaling zero as long as there is a potential hope of it leading to plus one where so did that was what you where what did you it mentioned. where did the equality act fail there's that's a complicated question it, elect, can, it, it failed in the senate where there aren't a lot of ele elected progressives. Why, fit does, why does elected progressives matter if Democrats take the L? Because the only reason they took L is because they didn't have more senators? Why? Like, well, how do you not understand so this? So who's, who's, uh, who's at fault for that? Is that Democrats at fault for that? Or is that progressive that, that's at fault for that? I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it, the Democrats are at fault for that. Right, I'm saying that we need more Democrats or or okay. progressives right, so elected on, so into on, Senate. Yeah. Genevieve, yeah. Genevieve Vinzonia, please. Yeah. Um, this is actually going back a, a little bit because obviously there was um your dialogue there, but I did want to redirect a Holy little fucking bit shit, to dude. what the fuck um the idea of I don't understand not voting for <laughs> um either of the major two party candidates in the presidential election. Um, the idea of that being maybe something that's more comfortable to you or writing, you know, none of the above in there. Um, I would say that obviously um, I, I would ask, do you, would you acknowledge that there's still tremendous value in going to the polls or filling out your ballot? Even if there's that one question that you might disagree with, there's still all of the other measures and other other things that you're getting to vote on. So there's still inherent value in encouraging people to go out and vote um, when it's election day, even if perhaps they really feel they morally can't vote for either of the two main um, candidates. Was that to me? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, okay, let me, let me wanna, I, my presence is very is very real in this panel. I'll try to make this as, sh as short as I can. Um, I think one of the the problems is with electoralism, kind of broadly, and this is kind of like where I'm sort of in the middle of terms of like non like non voting and, and the idea of no vote, right? The idea that I could propose of saying no no answer on the on the ballot question, right? Um, something that I do think is interesting is that we use ballot measures during specific election cycles 
as a means to getting people to the polls in the first place. Um, if I believe that a overwhelming majority of New Jerseyans don't vote during primary, I'm so fucking irritated. Why are we? My leg is bouncing like a motherfucker. These sort of questions that will directly change their lives on ballot questions for vote for in situations where they're not going to show up anyway, where there are things that individuals support and those ballot questions will lead to those, those changes. Like we got the expansion of sports betting to be clear. We got expansion of sports betting also due to the Supreme court making their decision to expand that. Um, look no further than governor Murphy, the, um, I forget the company you represented um, because Christie started it, but the, I guess the one I'm going to say to, to, to kind of round that out, because I don't want to mander too, too, too far on this, is that I think that ballot questions are things that people ought to pay attention to. But I think in the current electoral system that we live under, um, those questions kind of get sort of thrown into the wind where they're not representative of the constituents or even the electorates that might vote for that. Um, so I don't know how you can... Is the better option just to sit it out and not express your opinion then at all? No, I think the better I think the better option would be trying to communicate to your um I'm just gonna use a term that people might understand and not get too like sort of politically fancy about it, but like your local municipalities and say like, hey, we understand that voter turnout for primaries is incredibly low across the United States. So why are we putting ballots, why are we putting ballot questions that could change the lives of members of our state? tomorrow if we're when we understand that that might not have the proper representation and proper turnout now within the current system that would then require okay why don't we push it over to the general but i think that we need to reimagine how voting works all together where it's maybe an ongoing process as opposed to something that we just vote for every two years where if a ballot mm -hmm. question has the ability for people to vote on right away then they should be able to vote on that as soon as possible like, for example, whether it be the expansion of sports betting to marijuana to to guns, like if there's something that like people could like have be strongly in favor for, then they should be able to vote for that without waiting every two years or every one year, depending on how it looks like. I don't know if that answered that question fully. I'm sorry. It, it kind of does. But then it also sort of feels like like the argument of I don't like the system, so I'm just not going to participate at all. And. I think that, that that's really kind of a damaging mindset because you can disagree with something and think that there's room for improvement, but the only way to really get your point heard um, to the masses and have a position to be able to change anything is kind of to play the game and then to make changes from within it. I mean, I mean, sure, because on one hand, like, what did Martin Luther King get? He got a he got a bullet, a street, and a couple schools named after him. Like, what did what did Fred Hampton get? A bullet, a couple streets, and maybe a couple schools and scholarships in his honor. What did Malcolm X get? A bullet, a street, and a couple. So, so like, it Wait, seems to be Wait, did MLK that, like, like get the Civil Rights Act passed? We're not gonna. That was really stupid. Holy <laughs> fuck! Oh, what are you talking was, about? Well, I, I, that was that. That's a, a lot that's, of people. That's were, a, a lot of people. That's a that's a motivated. that's a situation where we might get stun locked. Uh, but the the point is is that and the the frustration okay. that i have right is okay if i, I believe that martin <laughs> luther king was the, the key proponent for the passing of the civil rights act then why hasn't there been more legislation to expand the rights of citizens without having to go all the way back to the 60s to say this was the biggest point like why hasn't the equality act passed why haven't we expanded the protections for Ident racially identifiable groups so that you don't run into loopholes and have to have sort of bandage policies like affirmative action. Like if we, if we believe, like that still makes my statement true, where even if I were to believe that Martin Luther King was the, the leading charge of the person who passed the Civil Rights Act, that doesn't d d ignore my frustration and that I'd love to have the expansion of civil rights without having to go back to the fucking 60s and 70s to when it was actually like put in fruition. Because these things clearly if we see that the Civil Rights Act has been stripped every single time in the United States by Republicans, the Voting Rights Act has been stripped by Supreme Court decisions, it's very clear that these things are kind of old and they need to be revised and reimagined. But it seems time and time again, like LBJ recognized, if we look at his war on poverty, if and even if you want to look back to the 
the the the PRARA, the the, uh, per, the Work Responsibility Act in the '90s, Bill Clinton said explicitly, if there isn't a continuation of policies beyond this act, then this bill is a failure. So we can look and say that bill that Clinton signed was a failure. If we do the same argument for LBJ, where paraphrasing that this is just the first step for additional legislation. And what did he choose to do? He chose not to run. And who did we get after that? Nixon. So we, we see that there needs to be a continuation of policy in order for things to change in the United States. But it seems that time and time again, that when we see the very clear fact that certain policies don't get picked up by Democrats or there's a continuation, we don't see that Democratic leadership has a continuation of policies going across candidates, then it's very, I understand the frustration of somebody getting dissatisfied with one plus one equaling zero. And again, Sansol, like you laid out very clearly that you're okay with the equaling zero as long as there's some type of idea for it to be plus one. So, and you said like you're willing to do it for as long as it takes. So the question I have for you is, what do you say or how do you navigate with individuals who are tired Sorry. Of one plus one equaling zero. I, I got it. Sorry, I gotta get some other people. Yeah, in here. I'll, um, I'll uh, defer. Is, is Zonia them. and then uh, Nine Tails. So I think part of there's so much that's happened, and there are multiple things I want to comment on, and um, and so much time has passed since I wanted to comment. I'm gonna narrow it down to just a couple of things. I think one thing that's being missed by um, by both Genevieve and Sansol about what Joe is saying is Joe is trying to say that he understands why people would not vote, why they would not be motivated to cast a vote right and multiple times he's kind of qualified that saying you know yeah you know we should work within the system uh but i understand why some people see it as something that isn't that there isn't a good option and so they don't cast a vote and i think that's the important thing that gets missed in our electoral politics is that there's too much willingness to just go and demonize those who don't cast a vote or who who vote for a third party instead of trying to understand why it is that they don't vote and adjusting their policies and their prescriptions and their representation to motivate and capture those who um you know who would normally abstain, right? And that's what a lot of this is about, is understanding why it is that somebody didn't vote, why it is that the, a lot of people in particular marginalized groups oftentimes won't vote. And and that seems to be where you guys are kind of missing oftentimes. Now, um, something else I wanted to comment on was um, the, I think what's most important because our national electoral politics are such a, a um, end game kind of goal. There's not a lot of ability to motivate a major paradigm shift in our national electoral politics. But grassroots work to change and modify the electorate at the local level is very valuable and is much more malleable. Um, not intending the rhyme there, but it's much more malleable because of the fact that you can actually interact with people directly and there's a connection, there's an interest, there is a dependency on those people. Like when I go to my um, city council, when I go to like uh, town council and city council meetings and I and I go and hang out there and then I start talking, they get to know me. And as I pull them aside and start to talk to them about things that I feel are concerning me, next thing I know, you know, the more that I do that later on, those people are suddenly talking about things that I had brought to them. Right. And there's, and then of course, getting yourself involved in local politics. Now, again, this kind of gets difficult when it comes to like, for instance, you get like LGBT people who are in a very conservative area, you know, you're born to conservative family in a conservative area, it makes it a lot harder to make those kinds of movements. But there's still, it's, it's still a better option to go with your local politics and try and move the needle there and provide more and more, um, you know, motivation on the ground there because that over time will shift the national electorate and that will also introduce things like for instance uh aoc and and others uh championing um um 
uh, ranked choice voting in New York, that happened. So that's another thing. You know, you can motivate those kinds of changes first on you know your local city level, and then on the county, and then on the state. Right? Those it's slow. It's a slog but it's much more likely to get you your representation and to eventually over time change the, the face of the, the national electorate. Uh, but I still think that back going back to what I originally said, demonizing those who would choose to vote ver- third party or abstain is simply just dismissing why it is that they're not voting in the first place instead of adjusting and accounting for those the reasons that they don't see an option for themselves and adjusting your policy and representation to better match them. Can I respond? Uh, I, I didn't, I was muted. Sorry. Um, do you want, you're going to respond, uh, Genevieve? Okay. Then yeah. Yeah. Just list. quickly. I know nine tails wants to speak as well. Um, but I do want to clarify, I don't advocate for or support the idea of shaming people who, who choose not to vote. I do think it is really important to listen to why. And as I've been listening to Joe, the reason that he's presented as why people might be choosing not to vote, at least the, the main reason that's being presented from him correct me if I'm wrong, seems to be that they feel they're not this, a person who chooses not to vote um, for either of the two party candidates might feel that they're not being well represented by either of those two. Is that accurate to the reason that you, you kind of expressed why somebody wouldn't want to vote? Sure. And then my um, prescription would be, I think people should feel free to vote for whoever they want, regardless of their political affiliation and their party. I still think that's participation in the process, and we ought to recognize that as something of value. Yeah, I think I think participation in the process is super important, um, and and I think that kind of goes back to I would never want to shame somebody for whatever their reason might be or whatever their choice would be, but I would want to encourage them to think about the consequences of their inaction and the potential consequences of if they did take action instead, what that could look like conversely, and to to kind of walk through that thought process because simply to me saying, I don't feel represented by either of these. So therefore I'm just not going to, to speak on it. Um, that doesn't feel effective to me. That feels, that feels like a, an excuse. Um, I think that it would be more valid to still speak up and then continue to speak on the fact that maybe the system itself is flawed in the way that we are able to express our votes. Yeah, so some points on this that I've accumulated and collected and gleaned. Um, I feel like the left actually does a disservice to voters by caring a bit too much about federal elections. Um, basically, like it's it's probably easy to let go of these issues when uh, you know that you don't want to cover things from all over the place and get lost in that. But I think as the left, we should do better at finding content creators who do go through this stuff and who, who do make content to help people navigate it. So that even like, like as a Canadian, even if I'm here in Ontario, if I really like a content creator who produces uh, stuff that informs voters in BC at like the local and provincial level, that, that we should definitely value that. And I, I would extend that personally to US politics because I don't see like I I think Canada's just the U.S. Uh, policy wise with some lag and some and some also some ahead of the curve stuff. It's very weird that way, but um, yeah. So in general, we could focus way on uh, way better uh, if we didn't just focus on federal elections. Uh, another problem is that we have to remedy the problem. Well, ideally, we would have to remedy the problem that most people do not like politicians. But we don't remedy it by saying, hey, you know what? You should actually just vote for them anyways. Um, I, I think that's really disenfranchising for people, especially like workers. Uh, and considering the material conditions that they don't have a lot of time to take in the whole platforms of every single candidate, we should be focusing more on the minutia than making broad sweeping statements that uh, essentialize uh, all the voters who just don't vote. Um, and then final point, uh, we should be supporting, and again, especially on the left, I actually think the right does a better job of this from the top down than 
than most would expect, but we should be supporting crowdfunded campaigns and doing ground action to bring pe people to the polls or even their votes to the polls. So um, I know there's a lot of stuff like this being done. If you're a leftist and you want to make a difference with electoral politics, uh, if you're already a content creator who's well established, great, do that. But if you're if 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 you're not already there, I would say the best thing you can do is is help with some actual action, help with campaigns that you want to support, and most importantly, uh, raise awareness for campaigns that are raising funds uh, through anything but corporate donors. Oh no, nine tells I'm gonna push back a little bit. No. I'm scared. <laughs> so the frustration I have is the lack of competitiveness within politics. And we have this illusion that is actually competitive. Um, I'll give you a, a really sort of, I guess, simple, simple example, right? Um, New Jersey is gerrymandered to shit to favor Democrats explicitly at the federal level. It is explicit gerrymandering in the support of Democrats. So much so that they have a majority of 10 to. So a politician who is a Republican, their vote in New Jersey is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. They're going to lose to Republicans, save two districts. Now, the frustration I have is that we, we see this lack of competitiveness when we, we go down and look even at like the primaries right now. So, for example, in District 10, um, Thomas, or sorry, Thomas, Jesus, you know, another, another cool guy, but uh, Donald Payne had, I think, almost 30,000 votes in his district towards his running for the primaries. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the Republican candidate, they only had 3,000 people show up at the polls. So people will see that 80% of, like, or Don, sorry, David Pinckney, excuse me, like David Pinckney won by 80% of the vote for the Republican primary. But it doesn't matter. He's going to get ass blasted by Donald Payne. I don't think that's OK. I don't think that's OK, regardless of it, that it's Republican or Democrat. And I, and I know that for a lot of people who are liberal, they might get uncomfortable in, in, in me maybe saying this is that I think that Republicans need to be able <clears throat> to be competitive in such a way where they're actually competing in these races and that these races are not just like in a vote into an eventuality of just more doomerism. Because it's, it's seen and this can happen in so many different ways, right? Like we can see it in um, District 7 with Tom Malinsky, who's a Democrat. He won with almost 95% of the vote. And as much as I love Roger Bacon, he's a cool guy. He's not beating him. He's an incumbent Democrat in District 7 in New Jersey. And then I look at Susan Kelly who's in District 6, she was up against Rick Mehta, and Rick Mehta was running for governor in New Jersey on the Republican side, and he got ass-blasted by Jack Cittarelli, and then when he ran for the House seat, he got ass-blasted by Susan Kelly. where yeah, it's I, like... I think I see the point yeah. that you're making. Yeah, for I sure. Think. Yeah. Um, like, I, I don't disagree with you. The problem for me here is kind of like the communication barrier for people who are actually trying to advocate for things like capitalism bad and stuff yeah. like that like if i have an audience that i'm saying hate capitalism and i'm saying oh also vote for this person who you know takes corporate donors because you know uh because they're they're just more strategic i can understand now i also mm -hmm. totally agree with everything you said with competitiveness but i can understand why there's there's suddenly a gap there and why when you said something <laughs> like and you know, in New Jersey, uh, Republicans always win. I, he says something more. Sorry if I got that wrong. I'm not oh yeah, to so to be to be I'm clear, I'm not trying to straw menu. Um, yeah, yeah. So to be to be to be clear and can I just like the, quickly make my yeah, point because I was going to finish. Absolutely. Because I think people cut off there when they do. Here's some, I guess I did too. Um, yes. People people uh, cut off there and they're like, well, now it feels like I have no control. So how do we give people a sense of control in these things when they're also feeling like they're giving up their values? Yeah, I'm closer to the position that it might be easier to advocate for it. There's so much with it, right? Like there's getting people more politically educated. So that's going to start in the school system. I know Democrats and Republicans alike are not for that, of the expansion of civic education, in public schools. So that's a hurdle in of itself. Um, mm -hmm. I think another hurdle is the advocacy for things that might represent your constituents better, like ranked choice voting where we see it sure. in, yeah. like, for example, like we see it in a nonpartisan fashion, 
where it appears like when we're trying to elect our school board members and we say, pick your two favorite candidates, and then that's totally okay. Or we see it at the council level of pick your two favorite candidates. And that's totally okay in a nonpartisan fashion. But then the minute we start getting to sort of levels of partisanship, then people get a little like, like wiggly. Um, because yeah. I would, because I would say, and this might be to your point that like, listen, like, I don't know if anybody needs to hear this and might be like miraculously and en endeviled in this position. Fuck Bob Menendez, but not Bob Menendez is the most, one of the most crooked senators to come from my fucking state. And you know who is running now and on the ballot for district eight, his son. So I fuck his son. Fuck Bob Menendez. It's like, how am I so like, and what sucks about that is because there are progressive candidates who are on that ticket. And then they got ass blasted because every, like Bob Menendez got, has like the, has like the id pull power to, to galvanize voters. But it's like, for fuck's sake, he's like so pro pharma, it hurts. And like, he's one of the reasons why we have a monopoly in our state in terms of healthcare. But then to say, and this might be just your point where it's like, I, I, I sympathize to people in District 8 of my state because Bob Menendez does not represent people in District 8, but there are people who are more than willing to say, I'm going to vote for Bob Menendez for the hope that we're going to get a progressive candidate down the line, despite the fact that there are progressive candidates on the ballot and they just don't get voted for. Where there's like, so it's like, that's like, and that's another whole thing, but yeah, I'm, I think we're closer aligned than a part of this. Maybe. Okay. Can I bring yeah, up a hypothesis? Oh. Your point super quick. Um, I, we said something about ranked choice voting. And when I was trying to talk about solutions, I've actually forgot to mention that. I do think that like up until like the right wing, this is like the best like big tent way for the left and de uh, Dems to actually get people to vote. Uh, if, if this, if things were more open this way, um and and like for me the important thing though is like i i'm so against shaming that like i'd rather we like talk about the material conditions in the system than focus so much on the individual voter and i feel like we're kind of overdoing that so that's why for me like i i wish there was an easier way to just say to them like he here's the better option but it, for some reason the we're, we're failing at that. And I, I wish, I wish it was. Uh, yeah. You easier. have to convince people. Can I bring up an example uh, of something and see what you guys would say to this? So let's say that you are part of a construction team. Okay. And you live in a town where there is consistent flooding issues, right? There's this giant wall. They built a great glorious wall that keeps all the floodwaters back and uh, it needs constant repairs. Uh, and it's made out of, out of uh, concrete, but someone has, discovered a new material, right? That needs to, that if you make the, the barrier out of that new material, then it'll be much stronger, much safer, and uh, much fewer, or many fewer people will die as a result of like the yearly floods, right? Now, not everyone is on board with trying to use this experimental uh, material because they don't know if it's if it's going to work. They don't know if it's um, cost effective. Um, but you know, uh, th it is there, right? There's you and a couple of other people that want to use this uh, this material. Now, would you say that um, if a certain group of those people wanted to split off, right, and go and make their own construction company where they 100% like divert all of their attention into trying to use this new material on the barrier, right? Like, it's going to divert uh, attention away from repairing and upkeeping the barrier, right? Uh, if they split off, would you be okay with those people splitting off and trying to do their own thing? Uh, at, or would you say that everyone needs to stick together and maintain the course until you can convince enough of the company to try and uh, use the new material? Ooh, boy, so you're I saying really want to do what America this. has peace, done peace. for decades. Joe? Well, I'm asking Joe. you, yes. Nine, which one, nine, which nine one would you be? Nine tails. I'm actually, actually going to pass, but well, nine tails go. Well, let's go. Thank you. So this is actually part of my theory of experimentalism. And it's why when I said to you, that after a while of voting for no step forward, we really don't get anywhere. So there are probably a lot of instances, maybe more in the like political sense than the infrastructure sense, but I could be wrong, um, where we actually do need to bring in these experimental things more than we do. 
and I think it's a it's a feature of neoliberal capitalism that these things never change, that we take them for granted. And even when they prove themselves to be failed hypotheses, we continue with them as if, you know, anything else would be absolute chaos, although the system does a very good job at containing its chaos. I'll, I'll agree with that. Um, my particular th my particular thing is, yes, we should. Uh, in general, uh, yes, we should do what? Which one of the two options? The exper uh, the experimental uh, approach where you diverge off. Now, this is where I'm saying things get sticky. Where I said before, I would also then advocate for more electoralism, where we do try harder to have a system that respects that. Okay, but in this hypothetical, that we have, that we have systems that listen. Yeah, in this, this hypothetical, hypothetical, if people if people split was it your off, question then, hypothetical. Right, I'm saying in in. In the in in the lore of this hypothetical, if you split off, then you're diverting a very like minute or, or a very uh, specific number of people that are needed to upkeep the 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 barrier, right? Yeah. If you split those people, then very likely there's going to be more people that die, or even like there's going to be like a, a catastrophic number of people that are going to die okay, because that's, you that's, split that's the resources. That's a bunch of neoliberal assumptions. I don't want to get into the the big thing. For Wait, what me do you mean was... neoliberal assumptions? This is a hypothetical. You're saying a bunch of people are going to die because they start voting. In a I'm saying way. in the in if you know that this is going to happen. If I know that they're going to die. Yes. Then I like it. It depends on on what the experiment is supposed to be. Is the experiment supposed to be nobody dies and this is you know the, the experimental dream? material like, that you're going to use this electoral system? So I don't know if like comparing it that way makes a lot of sense. Okay, so if you had a, a system where a hundred people a year die of flooding, right, versus you know everybody everybody in this hypothetical town dying because we've all we've split the we've split the the construction crews too much, you would rather like go for splitting everybody into their like uh, individual groups rather than try to convince people within the construction company that you're working in to all use the the new like hardcore adamantium you know stronger than steel building material like if we're talking about forming new societies then it gets complicated if we're talking about having a new political party then i think it makes a lot more sense um like in in general like the thing for me is that you're never going to be able to fully separate yourself from any of this. Uh, like I said, even if even if we do say quote form a new society, which is how I originally wanted to address this, then like we're still going to have to work within the systems that way that system just doesn't completely destroy people. Personally, like I, I just want to, you know, I'm not going to bring. I I want I want a spot later on in the panel to say something but it's it's going to be a change of pace I, and I know so a lot of people for want to me talk, so. for me I feel like if we were to compare the 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 dam to being like trans issues right and we could either bolster trans issues keep trans issues where they're where they are or divert our attention to two different groups right where we will definitely have trans issues be be regressed or, or or to where way more trans people are dying right yes right now there are going to be trans people that die under the current system but under under the the hypothetical that you just bit the bullet on for some reason way more trans people are going to die no so look look like here's a problem and just, i want to say please this come in on you guys this. focused okay, on um hun uh that yeah. you guys were really focusing on trans issues but like, here's a better uh, example. It's a big abortion. issue right now. Yeah. Or yeah. Abortion also even. Abortion. Yeah. Abortion is yeah. also yeah. really so, big. Like, we have a, we have a lot in common. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, 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 hold on. Thanks. Um, so um, abortion. Um, we have a situation where uh, Democrats, right, specifically Nancy Pelosi, have been campaigning for anti-abortion um, uh, uh, people in her party, uh, like uh, uh, Cuellar, I believe in New Jersey. Uh, is anti-abortion. Uh, well, he had a uh, opponent, Jessica Cisneros, who was not um, anti-abortion. Was very uh, pro-choice. Um, but it, it's not as if that, like, uh, uh, electing individuals uh, in the Democratic Party equals progress or equals like static, exactly. right? Like, uh, um, it's it it can be regression. Uh, um, and a voter can look at this intelligently, look at the options, saying, uh, why if um uh pro-choice if um 
abortion is something that is um, absolutely important to them, they can look at the, the option between a uh, Cuellar and a Republican and, and say, I, I accomplish nothing here. Uh, this party does not care about me. I've seen uh, in a in a moment where Nancy Pelosi goes off and says, "Well, um, the Democratic Party will 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 be there to fight for women um, in this time of uh, transition." If you know the Supreme Court ruling comes down, as we think it's going to come down, right? We're going to be there to fight for women, and then immediately goes out and um, uh, helps a uh, anti-abortion uh, colleague. Then, like, like you, I I think you it's not irrational for a voter in that in that state to say, absolutely not. I'm not supporting this. Okay, so I, so I, I wanted to mention too, uh, uh, is also I, a big quick response. Two guy. Yeah, can I be on the docket? Hey, you I know what's really funny about the Montos example Montos that you brought okay. up? The, the okay. really funny thing about the, okay. the example you brought up is that he won by like, what, less than a thousand votes. And about he won. Yeah, exactly. He yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, and so if more people, if you guys were able to get more people to to go out and fucking vote rather than vote third party or just withhold their vote for some principled like I don't like the Democratic Party, well, then you would on, have someone on, that on, wasn't. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who the fuck is if Nancy Pelosi? If Nancy the, the people that are advocating that says it's Henry Cuellar, if you know, people like Jim Clyburn hadn't gone and supported Henry Cuellar, those votes would have gone to Jessica Cisneros because you don't know. Hold on, hold on. You don't fucking know that, number one. Number two, even if... Are you if... going to tell me that that doesn't sway votes, that the people in power in these parties don't sway votes in those fucking, in those areas, in those districts? You're out of your fucking mind. Okay, do you, you think that, do you think about? that telling people... Do you people... think they have other people go campaign you can, for You them? can soy out and scream into your microphone all you want, Jason, but it doesn't change the fact that if people weren't out here advocating for people to just vote their, vote their values, and if their values are, like, fuck the Democrats, and if they don't go out and fucking vote for, like, fucking more progressive people in the primaries, then you're not going to get the, 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 the pro-choice candidate. You're going to get the, the, the pro-life people, okay? Right, because you Assuming have an entire Democratic Party you are sitting here. You're sitting here saying to the wrong shit. They he won, but with less than earth. a thousand vote margin. Okay. It doesn't okay. fucking matter. I, it I, does I matter because he way. won it by the slimmest. Because he had the weight behind spot. him. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry, hold on. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. Right? We got it. We're gonna go to Zonia for your quick response. Sorry, not Zonia. Excuse me. Uh, Nine Tails. The quick response. I apologize. Um, and then we'll go to uh, Genevieve and then um, Joe. Okay, also so really quick. After that, please. And then actual Zonia. Okay. Okay, so really quick, and uh, if if you want to respond, so I'll just I'll just keep. I just won't respond. But I'll, I yeah. I am hearing what you're saying as more of a question of options versus less options, or sorry, more options versus less options. I am for more options, simply put, especially more so as we get into a direct democracy. But until then, uh, I think like we should stop telling people that voting for change is just 100% effective, just something you should do. Uh, do you think that if a thousand there, people there are voted? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry. Hold on, one there, second. There, there, Asansol, hold sorry. your response. Uh, I got to get yeah, some other go people in, and you can respond to it later. Go ahead, Ninetales, finish your point. There, there are many other ways for the left, left to try to get change. We're smarter than just uh, stopping there. But more importantly, like if we're going to talk about this and be real, there's a certain efficacy to voting. It's like if you want to say it's 50 percent for most issues, fine. But I think the more radical left you get with issues, the more progressive you get, that efficacy drops exponentially. Yeah, let's go to uh, Genevieve, uh, then Joe and then um, Sonia. I just wanted to kind of react to um, your mention of abortion rights, obviously with the Roe v. Wade stuff that's going on right now. Um, I think that that further supports my argument that even if you don't completely agree with, with a specific candidate, that voting for the party that more closely aligns with your values is ultimately going to have a positive effect on you. Um, and wow. And I would I would say because that's what's ultimately whoever of those two parties, whoever is elected president is going to be in charge of appointing our Supreme Court justices, as we saw with Trump appointing, excuse me, appointing multiple justices who now are leaning the court in this much more conservative direction, whether or not people were a big fan of Hillary Clinton or the other Democratic options. Um, 
it still would have protected the rights that people on the left do advocate for. And I think if we bring this full circle back to the original tweet, it did specifically call out people who identify as being leftist. Um, and I think that if, if you're going to support those values or claim to, if you want to benefit from them, then you need to have your actions support what your beliefs that, are. But you're, but okay, that's then, okay, so we'll vote for a uh, president, but why vote for a Cuellar? I'm sorry? Sorry. Uh, vote, you can vote for president then, okay? Uh, if you're saying that um, the ultimate thing is uh, the Supreme Court, right? Well, then vote for the president. Why vote for Cuellar, uh, who will, if if he's in office and if he's in the Senate, then he's going to be pushing for judges who are uh, anti-abortion. He's actively working against you. Uh, and, and, and when it comes to uh, and, uh, abortion legislation, um, him and a few other uh, uh, corporate and conservative Democrats who are in office will actively be stymieing those things. So, okay, vote for um, uh, the president who's our, on the presidential ticket, but why vote for Cuellar? I think that I think that there maybe is a different strategy in my mind when we're looking at the general presidential election versus elections that are going to be um, on the state level or like a local level. I think that individual votes can have more impact on us if it's a smaller, if it's not the national presidential election. And so, if you did truly want to vote your conscience and it was outside of your party um at at that level then i think that your vote has a better chance of having the impact that you would intend for it um i think on a presidential level um sometimes we need to just go with go with the person who who is ultimately going to be the most aligned with us even if we don't fully agree with them what about effectiveness though as well like, so we, we voted in uh, Democrats. We had a Democratic president previously in Obama, right? Who uh, didn't get those judges in, didn't uh, really bother. Um, or at least he didn't push it uh, at the moment where he had the chance. He had a moment in time where he, where he could, and he didn't. Apparently, he didn't really he care about the He had a lot of much. opposition and a lot of people that really didn't. Yeah, yeah they but there's lots of excuses him. that the Democrats can always offer, and they do. They, they, have, they have plenty of excuses, but very little action. So um, uh, we, he had a moment in time. Uh, well, in his first two years where he could have pushed judges, he didn't, right? The moment Trump comes in, like day one, they're pushing judges, right? They fill up the judiciary are already. Um, and then you uh, go to uh, uh, Biden um, and Biden he, who demands, he, he wants to work for Republicans no matter what happens, right? He, he was just on Jimmy Kimmel talking about like how um, uh, Mitch He's McConnell is his... Friend, is this, uh, you know, hold on. yeah, and it's embarrassing. Yeah, it's fucking embarrassing. I He's agree. With Biden being the president. We hold should on, have a president that's no, trying to bring people together to try and get bring shit people done. together. No, no, no. Bring no, people sorry, together that want to hurt people. When you what have, the fuck? when you have Mitch McConnell, who has talking about the Supreme Court judges, literally stole a seat. Stole yeah. a seat from uh, Obama. Do you think that? Right? Do you think that Obama yeah, oh, was okay with that? And what yeah, was Obama you, supposed to do to about that? To how is Obama supposed to stop? To him and how bring is, them how is Obama supposed right? and, to stop that from it? happening? That's like embarrassing. This so give like me the course of action low Obama low was supposed to take. Uh, nothing um, like calling a bigoted like, fascist your like, friend, you know. Hold on, wait, 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 Jason. What a stupid fucking statement. Excuse me. No, that's what McConnell was. Holy shit! Holy shit! I'm still talking. Mitch, Mitch McConnell, um, who stole, who who said, yeah, you well, we can't have you put in. Install a new Supreme Court justice uh, so close to election. Okay, right. So they wait, um, and then as soon as he gets a chance, right, close to election, he installs a Supreme Court justice, a person who is completely bad faith, along with most of us, uh, the Republican Party. But still, um, uh, Joe Biden decides, oh, he's my friend. If I say enough nice things to him, he'll stop punching me in the face. Do you think that that's what his goal is? Like, what do you think is office. going on here? So the point is, right? <laughs> what what when, do you uh, mean? A voter. When a voter walks in uh, to a, a voting booth right, and sees that Democrats, they put them in office again and still have not accomplished the things they want, um, um, and that they've gotten themselves in the situation in the first place but, uh, by not taking the Supreme Court and the judiciary uh, seriously, like it, it's not irrational for them to go, like, I don't want to vote for this. I don't want to be a part of this 
Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, number system. one, Obama. Oh, there wasn't now. anything Obama uh, could uh, have uh, done to stop re- the Republicans from doing what they did. What they did was really fucking bad. It's probably one of the most gross, like breaking of norms in all of American fucking history. Okay, no one's sitting here and defending that because. But what Obama, um, like, if you could, you want like, to bring them together. Bring people uh, together. Right? Uh, yeah, because we have a fucking incredibly fucking split nation right now. And we probably want to try and find uh, compromise Mitch because McConnell. we live in a fucking the, the listen, McConnell. listen, the, listen the, I don't like Mitch McConnell. I don't know why you keep on saying Mitch McConnell's and, and, name like that's a dunk. Okay. What I'm yeah, trying to yeah, say yeah, here. Is, wait, wait, wait. Prime, holy shit. Listen, buddy, about. buddy, listen. What I'm trying to say is we live in a fucking democracy. Part of a democracy is trying to find compromise. If you're not able to find compromise with like half there of the is fucking no nation. compromise here. Either you get the Supreme Court justice or you don't. Right? It's wait, wait, wait! Hold the fuck up! Way. I've already okay. How was how was Obama supposed to get the Supreme Court justice into the into no, office? I'm I am talking about Mitch McConnell, like or, or Joe Biden saying Mitch McConnell is his friend. Mitch McConnell. How does that affect Biden policy? Refusing that because he. he in his negotiations, in his negotiations, he's already given up. Goes like, well, I, I, I'm going to reach out to my Republican colleagues, and I'm talking about like gun reform. Um, uh, instead of uh, like uh, having this strong position that we're going to start with, hey, let's water it down. Um, uh, the legislation I want to push for uh, Republicans who aren't going to. Hey, guess what? We have a 50-50 split Senate no right now. Do, if you don't get Republicans to vote for something in the Senate, then it's never going to get through. Any which way? So hang on. Uh, so, like, I, I want to engage in this exchange, but um, I can tell the political awareness is very low. Um, yeah, no, so I know. It really that, fucking sucks, Joe. It really sucks that there are so many people on here that don't realize that if you don't have enough fucking uh, Democrats in office, you can't get fucking Democratic bills through so, the fucking Senate. Yeah, it's really fucking crazy. No, I'm sitting on a panel with people that don't understand that. I want to explain this very, very... very I want to explain it seems this like Prime does it. It seems like you don't, I Jason. I would love to. I want to explain this as slow as I can. Oh, you're cute. So you can. So, so you I, can I know tell, I so I really want you to understand, like, like, I don't think any of us who are in the opposition of your opinions want you to, to be lib-brained on, on these positions. Like, we want to push you further left. And I think I, that's the intention. I, I'm, I'm giving the reality well. of the situation. Let me fucking finish. So here's the reality of my situation. I want to make, um, and I'm going to be a little bit personal here. Hurricane Sandy, a level one hurricane, fucked up my state. It left hundreds of thousands of people homeless who are still in effect of homelessness right now. There are hundreds of thousands of people who have adverse effects due to the destruction that had to the community. My old township still to this day does not have a police department due to the damage of Hurricane Sandy. So I want to make this very, very clear. And this is in 2012. If we fast forward to Hurricane Ida, I'm going to just I'm going to paint you this picture, which is why I rejected your hypothetical from the start. There is a bridge in Elizabeth that leads to this drastically dangerous flooding. And one thing that individuals were advocating for was the introduction of a reimagination of how we build communities so that they are less impacted by flooding. One of my friends was on these committees advocating for this in opposition of Democrats. When he posed the ideas, showed that the cost would be lower, definitively, of reimagining not only bridges, but roads, and also readjusting the housing. Democrats in his area rejected that. This was during the Sandy days. They warned that because what we saw in Sandy, we do not want to see this happen in our community. Democrats overtly rejected that my friend is homeless to this day because of hurricane ida in 2021 so my friend my friend advocated for policy in opposition to democrats gave them the clear solutions to how this could not happen in their community warning all the way back in 2013 that this is not a possibility it's an eventuality due to the danger of hurricanes not only in new jersey but in the east coast democrats ignored him and now he's homeless how do i convince him to vote for democrats because he is maybe if there were more democrats that were progressive on that on whatever committee they would have been able to pass they would have heard his things i want to jump in now he 
will never vote for Democrats again. Well, I, I really and love now, the fucking so, like individual fucking anecdote here. But like at no, the end of the day, at the, wait, Joe, 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 I'm just going to I'm going to respond to this and I'm going to hold on, hold on, hold on. really quick, really quick, really, really quick. I'm going to say this and I'm going to let fucking someone else speak. I'm going to say I'm just going to respond very quickly and then I'm going to let other people talk. I'm not finished with my point. The frustration that I have with this conversation is that there are so many people all over this country who are disenfranchised at the lack of action when it comes to Democrats, when it, when it comes to policies, some of which have warned in my case that I brought up, which is why I brought that up years that this is not, this is not something that you can just one plus one equals zero and hope that's okay. We have to proactively push for this thing or it's going to happen to our community and guess who could get into power by and and actually affect that change of electing mo or not moderate democrats but progressive democrats into those positions so that when someone and failed well then then you have again. to get more people and to that, vote for it, progressives it uh, it's just seems like the positions that you have aren't an, aren't uh, aren't popular enough here's to fucking get elected me. into here's office guess me. what it's here's socialist socialism just isn't Socialism just isn't popular I'm enough. Sorry, did I all right, I don't know. Or, or, or I'm sorry. The kind of social, the socialist kind of like thoughts that you guys are putting forward. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I don't know if you okay. just took okay. Twitter okay. brains to okay. fucking okay. understand okay. that these okay. ideas okay. aren't popular, okay. but everyone, 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 shut up. Everyone, shut up. Everyone, shut up. Zonia has been trying to break in for a while, right? So I'm gonna give Zonia a spot to do so. Um, the nine tails, the back to Joe. Sure. Okay, so um, I'm going to use one of the most extreme examples because I think it's something that is very uh, telling uh, and kind of helps explain this story. It's also going to date me um, because something I remember very well in 1992 was the significant turnout of, um, of people of color for that election voting Democrat and were very motivated, very enthusiastic. It was a significant change in our electoral out, um, um, outcomes and or turning out at the time that was talked about all over the news. And I was just starting to become aware of politics at the time because of that. It was being talked about so much. Well, what happened? Okay, so Democrats won. Not only did they win in the, um, in the presidential election, but they also controlled the House and the Senate. And in addition to that, two years later, the Democrats brought forward the tough on crime bill of 1994 that then actually did significant substantial harm to those very groups that turned out in record numbers to vote for that party. It actually genuinely did harm for generations mm -hmm. that, they're, that they're still recovering from today. Right. So we talk about it today as one of the greatest uh, crimes against uh, the uh, against marginalized peoples, particularly communities of color by the Democratic Party. When Hillary Clinton was running for election against Trump, one of the biggest things to come up was her participation in that and her push for that crime bill and the kinds of things that she was saying at the time after her, after her family and her party being largely supported by people of color, the kinds of things she was saying about super predators, right? So th their vote actually did brought in people or helped to bring in people that then turned around and hurt them and devastated their communities, tore their families apart and just ruined many people's lives. So, and now I'm using the most extreme example because it's something that we can all recognize and we can all hail back to with like the Clinton versus Trump election and such. And, um, but this is something that happens even today, just in piecemeal for a lot of, a lot of people who are voting, they get to see and feel the effects, the negative effects of voting for these people who seem to be on their side, but then go around and implement policies that actually do harm to their communities. So that's something that is not, that's being overlooked. That's not being paid attention to. Now, yes, we do need to vote more progressive people in and less of the people who are just pandering and then immediately turning around and betraying, you know, those who they, they pandered to. But when the, when the playing field seems to be fairly stacked um, and all you're really left with are those same brand of people like the Pelosi's of the world, right? And the Schumer's of the world. 
you got to you look back on generations of negative f- impact on your family and what it's done to people that you know, people that you came from, and you go and you say, "Yeah, I don't want to do that again." Right. So that's something we have to be empathetic to and be aware of and pay attention to. Okay, really okay. quick. Uh, the- uh, nine, no, 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 no. Yeah. Nine tails. Then Joe um, and Hansel. You can because people are going to be responding to you. Okay. Yeah, so, and so and I'm sorry to give you another thing you might want to write down. Yeah, I'm um, writing everything but down. But this is actually, I'm going to start this with a uh, question for the entire book because I am curious. Uh, the crime bill was supported all, by how everybody, okay guys. Is everybody with direct democracy as a response to electoral, electoral politics? Should we necessarily fear the uh, tyranny of the masses argument, or is that a distraction? I kind of think it is, by the way, and I think we should. Um, but more specifically, to me, it seems like this puts the left in a particularly difficult position, which is to say, and this is why we, sh- th- I'm going to conclude with why we shouldn't shame people, uh, which is to say that, you know, we don't support the Electoral College. Uh, there's a lot lo- wrong with it. And it's obviously not uh, free, uh, as a lot of people would probably idealize it to be. Uh, so, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense then to say, well, then it's your fault for not doing it. Because not only is the electoral college the issue, there are material conditions, people, workers, for example, a lot of the time. Uh, there are probably very interesting reasons worth looking into that I wish I knew more about at this point. Uh, and I would have prepped for if this if I had more notice uh, on why local voters are typically, you know, uh, more affluent than not. So, you know, there's a lot more to consider than just, than just like focusing on uh, the individual or like doing the biopolitics, as Foucault would say, and saying like, no, like it, it you, you know, you're just an agent of choice. And so I direct the responsibility on you. Um, just quickly, th- guys, we're in a level uh, two hype train. Hop off the hype train if you can. Uh, we're at 0% down, 100% left. Um, thank you for the kind of people who hopped out with me. I'll shout you guys out later. Thank you, Zonia Dead, for being so kind to skip the sub. 381 subs total from our friend Zonia Dead. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're at 13% now because of her kindness. Um, of a level two hype train, four minutes left on the clock. Um, can we get to a level three hype train? Subs to channel, get fits or give subs. I'll, if you're enjoying this B-mans, content. B-mans, I love how like you only, so well, black like people are button, only, uh, are only yet. not brainwashed um, also, when they uh, agree with you. That's really funny. That it's almost like black people aren't viewing. able to think for themselves um, in your opinion. To keep Fucking weirdo. Um, uh, so if you got a resub, use your resubs. Like a little bit, gifting a sub as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're at 25%, 75% left. Three and a half minutes on the clock. Can we make it to level three hype train? Please help us out. Um, we're getting uh, close to there. So uh, if you got a resub, use your resubs. If you have Amazon Prime, says Prime Gaming, use that as well. Um, on the channel, it helps us out a ton. Um, so uh, shout out to the people who've been helping out so far. And I might jump break in because, you know, you know, pipe thing. Uh, okay, so we got nine tails. All right, uh, Joe, um, Jason, and uh, and yeah, Sansa. But people are going to be responding to you, Sansa. So uh, Joe, go ahead. I have, a, I have a two-faceted question for, for Sansol, which requires him answering the first part of this question. So I'll answer, so I'll ask this as plainly as I can. If there was a Democrat, a Democrat that is aligned with your values, but may have a difficult time winning, and is not aligned with values that you're passionate about, would you vote for them? And why is that the answer that you hold? In the, in the primaries or in the general? It doesn't matter what, what election it is. I'm it does matter. You, if there was a candidate that's a Democrat, a Democrat that is aligned with your values, but may have a difficult time winning and is not aligned with values that you are passionate about, would you vote for them? Uh, in the primaries, yes. In the general, no. Why? Why? Because in the primaries, I feel like that's the time for you to try and push your, your party in the direction that you want, right? By trying to elect people that most align with your values. But once you get to the general election, if that person doesn't get to the general election, well, then you're getting to that, that one, plus, uh, one plus zero equals one issue, right? Rather than one uh, plus negative two leading you to like negative pro- progress. How long are you willing to vote for Democrats who do not hold values that you believe in. How long? Well, I I I I agree with the values of Democrats, 
But uh, if they if they like didn't agree with any of my values, I see. Here's the thing: you guys are pretending like you're, you're, a democratic. You're running, you're running. You're running. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no I'm not no, running no, away no, from no, shit. So me, I'm trying so to so explain. I'm trying to answer your question. Well, I'm sorry. You asked me a question. I can answer it if you want me to. You're running from my question, so I'm going to. And Re ask the question phrase. again. I'm going to give you the I'm exact same answer. I'm going to re you have to shut the fuck up or this is never going to go anywhere. I mean, you could ask the same question over and over and over. Not, you don't know what I'm going to say. Um, so you have to stop talking. Are you going to re rephrase the question again? or I'm going to rephrase what you just said to okay. me. And I want you to agree or disagree if that is what you believe. That is what I was going to say. So please stop talking when I'm speaking. Can we do and that for about three minutes? You, you uh, told okay. me to answer as your question. Dude, I tried to answer your question. Now you're mad at me. Okay, so like, okay, go okay. ahead and ask so, your question again. Ooh, I asked the not... question, but uh, hey guys, 63% uh, of our, our level uh, one hype train, or sorry, level two hype train. Um, we're almost there to level uh, three. Sub to channel, get biscuits. We're almost there. Thank you, Sonny Depp, for another one. 75% um, uh, done. 25% left. Can we make it? Less than 30 seconds on the clock. Sub to channel, get biscuits, give subs to move us along. Help us out. If you're liking this content, support what we're doing. Zonia is amazing. Fucking love you, Zonia. Um, can we make it to our uh, level uh, three hype train? Go ahead. Ask your question. It's not a question. I'm trying to make sure I understand what you are saying. You are saying that in the primaries, you are willing to vote for a candidate that is aligned with your views, regardless of their ability to win. Is that correct? Um, yeah, in the primary, sure. Then at the federal level, you are saying that if your candidate loses in this case, you are willing to support whatever Democrat exists there, even if they are not aligned with what you believe and what you hold valuable. If there's a Democrat, is that what that, you were saying? so if there's a, I'm trying to make sure I get your, your question completely correct so that you don't interrupt me again. So the question is, if I vote for someone in the primaries, right, and then they make it to the general, or are you asking me if I vote for someone in the primaries, they don't win the primaries, but their opposition does, would I vote for that opposition in the general? You said that in the primaries, you would vote for a candidate that's a Democrat that is aligned with your values regardless of their ability to win. You then said that if that candidate were not to win, that you would support whatever Democrat who could win. Is that correct yes. or am I missing? Yes, that's why I'm trying. Okay. That's why I asked the clarifying question. Yeah. Gotcha. So my question to you then is how long I got are that you right, right? Like did I understand this question right? Who are not aligned with your values. Because in this, you said, you said that in the primaries, you're willing to support a candidate that is for your values, regardless of their ability to win. Now we are at the federal level. This candidate is past the primary stage. They may be your candidate lost in this case, but you also said you're willing to vote for a Democrat no matter what at the federal level, regardless of their values. Now, my question is, and it seems like this might be where the rub is, you're saying definitively then you're willing to vote for a Democrat no matter what, regardless of what their values are. Is that what you believe? Not because they're a Democrat, because the Democratic Party generally aligns with my values. So then my question then would be, would you support a candidate that's aligned of your values regardless of their political affiliation at all levels? If they... I'm, I feel like we're like asking, like, I feel like we're like going like through three different like le levels of questions. Okay. I'm trying to understand. I'm not trying to be like shitty or anything. I'm not trying to like run away from any questions. I'm genuinely trying to understand. Okay. So let's say we have, we have, uh, Joe Smith and, 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 and Bob's not Smith, uh, Bob, uh, Richards. Okay. John Smith is my candidate in the primaries. All right. I vote for him and he wins. All right. Now in the general, are you asking me if I would vote for him? Oh, you're, you're I'm sorry. I'm gen I, I'm just, I'm genuinely trying to understand. Asked, you're switching what I asked you. I'm not trying to. So it, no, it's very clear <laughs> that if a candidate that holds your values were to win, you would vote for them. That's what you said pretty much the entire panel. What I'm asking you, and I'll try and I'll say it again. If there is a candidate, and I'll take, we'll take Democrat out of the picture here, because we might be getting stuck on this. 
It's How about like Bernie or or or, his, or Hillary, right? Like I vote, I voted for. A, no, no, no. If there's a candidate, let's let's get the names out of here. Let's just get to the direct thing. If there is a candidate on a ballot at the primary level, you've accepted that you're willing to vote for them regardless of their ability to win. However, you to include Democrat in this again, you said that you favor Democrats, which is why I put Democrat in there. So yeah. I'm going to reinclude it now. So we have a Democratic candidate who has values that are lined up with you, and at the primary, you vote for them, and I'm saying that they lose. Now the other, the other. Oh yeah, I would vote for the other Democrat. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Yes, and so, then and then my question is: thirty seconds left in the clock. Thirty seconds left in the clock. Sorry, that's my fault. Can you give him like uh, one more minute? Yeah, I, it's my fault. Then, then my well, I mean, question, yeah. So I mean, yeah, subs to the channel. I mean, just like subs to the channel. Oh, 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 oh sorry. Yeah, uh, we have like, less than three seconds left. Can we oh. make it to a level four hype train? I didn't want to take up uh, his guys, time. This is how we, we uh, allow all this to happen. So if you like what we're doing, please support this community. Um, and listen, we get to uh, Zonia Dad gifting with a thousand pitch. God damn, you're amazing, Zonia. Thank you so much. Anonymous Gifter, thank you for gifting us up as well. 66% on, um, up, 75% down, 25% left. We have seconds left on the clock. Can we make it to a level four hype train? Not sure if we can, but like one way or the other. I, I think the people who've been helping us out and uh, pushing it along, much appreciated. Okay, uh, go ahead, Joe. <clears throat> So again, we, we understand that in this situation I'm laying out for you, the candidate that is aligned with your values has lost. And now the candidate that's not aligned with your values, who's a Democrat, is running. And you said that you would vote for them regardless. Is that correct? At the, now we're at the federal level. Yes, I voted for Hillary. Okay, I don't care. <laughs> so the question I have for you is how long are you willing for that process I just laid out to you, the process of you voting for a candidate at the primary level, them losing, and then at the federal level, voting for their opposition. Yeah. Especially if their opposition is against the values that you hold. How, you hold. How long are you willing to do that? You said earlier in the conversation, you said as long as this takes. What did you mean by that when you said that? What did I mean by that? I would rather us not regress by voting in Republicans who are very willing to like, uh, like rescind any protections that we've we've built up for gay people, for trans people, for black people, et cetera, et cetera. I will always take the party that is most aligned with my values, right? I'll choose individual candidates that are most aligned with my values in the primaries, but I will choose the party that is most aligned with my values in the general. Do you think it's possible for a candidate, a candidate that is running at the federal level to be disaligned with what you believe to, to value and disaligned with the Democrat Party? I cannot conceive of a Democrat running outside of like the, the convention of like the Democratic platform winning and then also like get like getting to the general at all. Right. Like if, a, if someone ran as a republic, like ran as a Democrat, but had a whole bunch of Republican, like had their entire platform, like perfectly aligned with the Republicans. And I voted for the progressive in the in the primaries. And then the the person that had the Republican values got to the general. Like, I mean, yeah, I probably still would vote for them because they're not like, a, again, no individual uh, politician is their own island. Right. So from what I hear. It sounds like the reason why you hold this position is because you believe that Republicans are in direct opposition to the Democrat Party. They're so in direct opposition to my so, values. I think we agree that we weren't going to cut each other off. I I'm just being clear. I'm just clarifying. I, yeah. I'm going to restate Go what ahead. I said. You believe that Republicans are antithetical to your values. So much so that you're willing to vote for a Democrat who might be in opposition to your values and in opposition to the party just because they're a Democrat. Is that the position that you hold? Yeah, absolutely. Because again, I don't think that any politician in the United States is an island, right? They are still beholden to their party. So yeah, I would vote for them. Because the Republican, because the Republican is going to be worse. Otherwise, the other person would have just run as a fucking Republican. I, I understand. So, okay, go ahead. I, I laid out to you that this Democrat in question is disaligned with your values and disaligned with the values of the Democrat Party. And you said that you would vote for them regardless of that. 
because the Republican Party is also disaligned with the values. Yeah, but of, the Republican Party, Democrats. because the way our electoral system works is like you have to like vote, you have to like caucus with someone in in Congress, right? There's a Democratic caucus, there's a Republican caucus, and and like the Senate, especially if you don't have a uh, one caucus that has a, a super majority, then you're not going to get anything through. So I would rather have someone who is like a Joe Manchin type as a Democrat being able uh, there taking a spot in the Senate because then the Democrats will actually be able to bring bills to the floor of the Senate. If Joe Manchin did not get elected in 2020, uh, in 2020, then, or why well, did, did he even run? Uh, he might've been, you know, if let's say Joe Manchin was running and he won in 2020, then like, yeah, I would say that, yeah, I would take Joe Manchin over, um, over Republican in any day, because otherwise all the bills that we passed in Congress wouldn't even be brought to the floor in the Senate. Yeah, absolutely. One million percent. Why is that even a question? The conflict that I have is that I laid out for you a situation where a Democrat is disaligned with not only the views of the Democrat party. And I just explained to you why it's still okay to vote for that person. I thought we were going to try, try to try this level of charitability. You said that you are in support of a Democrat that is not only disaligned with your values, but disaligned with the, with the values of the party because they are a Democrat. And then you said, additionally, because Republicans are disaligned with democrats so how is this politician that you're supporting that's disaligned with your values and the values of the democrat party any different than a republican because why do you want to make that I just, distinction I, I i i just said because if we if we have 50 democrats and a and a vice president who is a democrat in in the senate then we can actually bring bills to the floor we won't even be able to bring them to the floor if it's the republicans in office in the in the senate if they hold a majority in the senate so yeah in like a, a situation like that yeah one million percent i don't think a lot of people who are farther left than you which seems to be most people on this a panel. lot of individuals would agree with yeah, what that's because they don't saying? understand. They don't understand how our electoral system works. I don't. I don't think that's the case. I just no, it's one million they, percent they, the case because I you're arguing with believe, me on the fact that I'm like a, this that the 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 systems in place right now. Like, do you agree that if there was a if we had forty nine Democrats and fifty one Republicans that none of the none of the bills that have been passed in Congress would even be seen on the on the Senate floor? We haven't exactly been getting a lot passed. So. Okay, but they've that's been they've been brought to the floor. Really they can be brought to the but, floor. But hear, but hear me out. We can do things like the we can do things like the omnibus change. bill. There's no yeah. change in material yeah. conditions. So I don't know. Like we had the omnibus bill. We had the omnibus bill go through because we had 50 Democrats in office. Nice corporate giveaways. You that was you gotta wrap it up. Oh, okay. So like, okay. <laughs> Fuck off. So the the reason why I ask you this, also, I'm going to make a definitive claim about what I believe you to believe. I believe that you are just a liberal, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with being a liberal. But I think the, the desire for, with, with Ninetales especially, and myself especially, and even, even Jason to an extent, is that we just want to push you further left on, in, the, in the idea that Democrats ain't shit. Sometimes they are the shit, but most of the time, by and large, they ain't shit. And ha using the fear of Republicans and the fear of Republicanism as this, this driving force to vote for Democrats is something that is a bridge too far for a lot of individuals, especially those disenfranchised with the political process. Okay. Joe, and, really quick. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay. So did you, did you hear the, 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 my logic behind why I would still choose like the, the, like the blue dog Democrat? Did you hear my justification? I, I I've, I've reworded what you said and you agreed with it. At, wh at what point? You're saying that I'm, I'm willing to just like uh, sell out all of my values, but the reason that I'm okay with voting for that person is because we have a, a system in place so that we can pass bills, right? Do you recognize that? What I recognize is that you have If you have the choice... Unwilling Sorry, go ahead. I'm interrupting. I'm you. done. We're done. We can okay. close out. Okay. If you had the choice between Joe Manchin and a and a centrist Republican, we are done. We can close out. Okay. So, so you don't. So all I'm hearing is that you don't understand how the fucking Senate works. Okay. That's all I'm hearing from you because you're not so willing I, to engage so with I that. Out. So yeah.
Oh yeah, I'm sawing out. You're yeah. you're unable to yeah. engage with the actual topic at hand because you don't know how uh, our yeah. fucking electoral I system works. I tried my best to be charitable with you, <sighs> and it's clearly a you're not able to, to be long. charitable to, to me because you're too fucking uh, stupid to engage with what I just said. Oh, Joe. Okay, and you're white. Wow. Oh wow! Oh, I'm so fucking offended. <laughs> I don't know, like, what, we're just gonna just use words back and forth that mean nothing, you know? Like, okay, okay. <laughs> like, well, wow. this has been an interesting uh, debate between two people on the panel. I lost interest. I'm sorry, yeah. I can't yeah. agree with that. I lost interest like five or six minutes ago, at least. Sorry, guys. Yeah, same. Well, it's it's fine. <laughs> oh, well, that's when we ran out of time, so that makes sense, Genevieve. Um, so did, uh, did Jason's he, internet cut uh, out, or is he just gone? I, I, have, I have no idea. Oh, okay. Um, uh, right, Zonia. So very strict time oh. schedule, it appears. <laughs> yeah, I mean, possibly. Um, so uh, uh, we're going to uh, close this out, but we're going to continue on with the uh, with, with the content as always. Uh, we will have open walk on panel right after this, right? So the content does not end. Stick around. We have more for you, as we always do. Hit that like button. You haven't done so yet. Hit that like button. Make sure I'm kicked. Or the follow button. Why am I saying like button? It's not YouTube. What the fuck? All right. Uh, hit the follow button right now. Uh, and make sure notifications are on so you know when we're going live. Um, I expect for a social chat for our social media. We Did have. Um, made it with three um, we got Twitter where we post. Hey, thanks for the raid, buddy. Going on. Check out. Uh, uh, Twitter Talk Discord is where everything years. happens hard. And so the community wants you to be part of the Discord. Jump on in. We'll be having a panel there. So uh, jump there. Uh, TikTok, we we're posting um, clips for the show, entertaining clips. Check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, you know, subscribe to that or follow, whatever. I don't know. Um, do a thing there, um, please. YouTube uh, is where you find the bots. Like, comment, subscribe, come in, and consider becoming a YouTube member by hitting that join button if you enjoy getting this content uh, all the time, seven days a week. Okay, I'm going to give an outro to all my uh, uh, all these amazing individuals. And the panel was guys, cancer. Uh, uh, sorry, well, gals really uh, who are left here. Um, I want to give you space to like uh, give like some sort of uh, outro, like in terms of like um your final thoughts on this uh topic okay so please do that uh, <laughs> get in whatever you want to say uh, sonia all right uh yeah so uh fun panel um a bit of a, a a bit of a contest between you and you two sansel and joe but um still fun panel and uh, i think probably to wrap them up this like my position on it I think that, you know, as mentioned in, in my intro, there is some complicity to your or complicitness, so whichever it is, um, to your not participating in the electoral process when there are people who are up for re-election or, or are running for election who have uh, championed harmful policies or even written and drafted and implemented or voted on harmful policies that are harmful to you. So I still want to stand with that position, but I think it's it's very important for us as a society to put pressure on our representatives to not just and and of course our voting population to not just dismiss those who um or or demean or demonize those who abstain from the electoral process because they don't feel represented or who cast a vote for a third party because they don't feel represented. And I think we need to put pressure on our representatives and our, and our politicians to, um, to look into that, to understand it and to move into more progressive directions as well as we also need to motivate our own, you know, um, people within our communities to part, to get involved and take their issues to the field and actually fight for them and become a, a, even be politicians themselves and run for local office and work their way through the electoral process, hopefully eventually representing their, um, their districts and their states on the national level with progressive policies that actually benefit them as opposed to just betraying them once they get into office, which we've seen time and time again. So we need to have that empathy. I think that's very important to have that empathy, have that understanding and actually do the work to change things. Um, other than that, it, uh, I think that uh, a lot of you guys were, were kind of talking past each other at times because I think there were many times where you could have agreed, but then still to kind of talk past each other. Um, so it'd be nice if we kind of saw that, um, I don't know, just a little more charitability overall on the panel. But then lastly, 
Uh, let's see if we can get another hype train going before we move to the open panel. Get uh, Prime some, you know, some subs or some bits here to kind of pay him back for the time that he spends putting up with these kinds of shenanigans. <laughs> dealing with everybody talking at once and talking over him and talking over each other and just generally dealing with a headache on our behalf, bringing this to us seven nights a week. So if, if anybody can is, uh, has the ability to donate a little bit without breaking the bank or anything, uh, that'd be great. So thank you. Thank you so much. Sonia has been incredible and thank you for the kind support. Seriously, your direct support. That means a lot, Sonia. Um, shout out to, seriously, shout out to Sonia. She's been, uh, great to us for a very very long time so shout out to Zonia. everyone check out her channel um check out everything that she does uh and like check out her, her uh, fucking um twitter account there's that's helped us uh, have this conversation in the first place right her responding to someone right getting in her dunks um she wasn't really ducking but uh <laughs> I, I do dunks. memes a lot of memes yeah. <laughs> uh but yeah shout out to her uh yeah and support the channel um but i, I do this out of love i mean uh like how how could I ever um like uh, have a wh why would this ever cause me a headache right I mean like uh, we had these two wonderful individuals uh going at each other head to head and not listening to me when I talk to them that's amazing I love that I want it every day I want it every day uh so if you want if you want me to be doing that every day subs the channel all right uh let's go to our friend Madam Genevieve uh this was. <laughs> I, I want to say this is unusual. It's not. Um, but uh, <laughs> Madam Genevieve, thank you for uh, stopping by and uh, uh, jumping in. I thought you had a lot of valuable things to say, so I do appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me, and I really did enjoy myself, even if things got a little lost in the weeds towards the end, and I couldn't help but zone out those last few minutes. <laughs> um, but I do think this is a really important topic, and I think that it's it's really great that you decided to have this panel. Um, I don't support shaming people um, who are not voting, but I think it's super, super crucial to explain to them and encourage uh, their participation um, because it's the only way we really have at this point to make sure that our opinions are heard. Um, it's not a perfect system, I recognize that, um, but we can fix it by working from within, I believe. Um, with that being said, I hope to make some more regular appearances here um, in the future. You can follow me on Twitter, Madam underscore Genevieve, um, and that's going to have all my links and all my updates right there. Thanks again, was, uh Absolutely. It was underscore Genevieve. I tried to look for you on Twitter. I didn't yeah, know. there's an under, there's somebody else who took it without the underscore. I don't know who she is, um, but mine has an underscore. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you. And yes, we will uh, sit, hit you up with um, invites in the future. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's go to our friend Nine Tails. And again, we're so happy that Nine Tails came through. Um, I was a part of this. It's nothing's changed since you've been gone, Nine Tails. It's literally the same thing. Uh, <laughs> but thanks for being around. I take offense to that. I think I did a lot better than I used to. No, 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 no. Not to you. I'm saying uh, here. Oh, like, here. Nothing's changed here. Yeah. I mean, I I didn't really, I never really paid it that much attention. I just enjoy the conversations one way or I don't. Um, yeah, so thank you for having me. Um, we'll, I will be on the open panel as well. Uh, do I want to plug myself much? No, um, just, yeah, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash M9Scarlet. That's the letter M, the number nine is Scarlet with two Ts and no E's at the end because I've been getting asked that a lot. Um, so yeah, great, great Twitter tag to plug myself with on streams. Yeah, I, I think the biggest problem that I see here is that, first of all, people are uh, who are advocating for voting more than they should. Uh, I figure they're, first of all, a little bit too okay with the Electoral College uh, and the current state of the electoral system. Uh, and that needs to be addressed a lot more. Uh, if people are going, who, if if people who feel disenfranchised are going to feel like they're going to vote, uh, so does money in politics. It is such a huge issue, and I, I don't think a lot of people really consider it when they're voting. But it is something that subconsciously makes them feel like, why am I going to vote? Because none of these politicians really care in the end, so long as they get their paychecks, kind of deal. Um, and as cynical as that is, we got to remember that the like, if we're going to talk about people. 
like they don't see things from the level that we're talking about them at. Um, and it's really hard to say exactly how somebody will see an issue one way or another. And I think it actually gets really poli uh, complicated if you're not if you're not going to get past the politics by looking at polls and stuff like that, which I was not prepared to do. Otherwise, I probably would have brought that up more. And so the final thing is uh, we, we're putting too much. Uh, first of all, uh, try to support direct democracy and uh, if not rank choice voting whenever possible. But second of all, uh, we need to stop blaming the voter. We need to do more action on the ground at the political, at the uh, local and regional level to, or I guess like for the states, uh, the state level and for Canada, the provincial level to really like bolster that side of things. I actually think the right's doing a much better job with that. Um, and unless we're willing to address the complications that face the average voter, uh, it's probably not something uh, we should be navigating with analyses because it's uh, not not wise in my opinion. Okay. Um, let's go to my man, uh, MVP Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis, uh, dude, I, I reach out to you all the time and for a good reason. Um, thank you, Joe Lewis, for coming through. Like, you, you literally just got off of work. It's like, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, and I think the uh, panel is better for it. So thank you so much for, for your contributions as always, buddy. Yeah, this was this was a lot of fun. And like look, like despite the the disagreements and the and the argumentation is that I think everybody's deep desire is just to push people farther left and sometimes when you see um advocacy in some type of way, um you might you might react in different in different things. Like things that I'm kind of very strongly um against is incrementalism. And unfortunately, liberalism at its core involves some level of um, incrementalism at, at varying levels. Um, some people are farther than others, but, um, and that's okay. Like, <laughs> people are gonna get radicalized how they, how they get radicalized on, on certain positions and issues. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited to see people's butterflies. Um, I will say that within the topic broadly, Voting is just one tool that we can use in the political process. And my frustration is that people, based on their language and how they talk about things sometimes, advocate for, for voting as the only tool to enact change. And I think that there needs to be, for harking, like, heralding back to the tweet, uh, a better participation in the political process. That can be advocating for policy change at the local level, that can be included joining committees, whether it be at your local council, because um, there are plenty of committees that go unseated, especially in the environmental space, that need people talking about and researching these policies. You can do this in, in the way of, of education. So you can go into particular fields and dedicate your entire life's work to, to, to studying and approaching this thing. So I want to give a shout out to Bela. Um, Bela TV is one of those individuals who's a, a strong climate activist. And her climate ad advocacy, people remember her when she called somebody a bitch, but I remember her for political advocacy. Um, and, and that's something that you can, you can do. That's also participating in the political process. You can join a local organization that is aligned with your values and they can support policy on, on the behalf of yourself and others. And these are all, and again, these are all just tools in the box that we, we choose to participate in. And I want people very broadly speaking, to not treat the voting process and electoralism as the be all end all to ways that you can enact change. Because if I'm being quite frank, for me, it's not about like the change that I want in the world, I'm not going to see. But my children might, my children's children might, it's no longer about me, it's about them, and making sure that they see a world better than what I put it off in. Because I don't want to be the if I'm going to racially identify myself, the hundreds of thousands of black Americans who protested during the Civil Rights Act, and that was the, the peak of their political advocacy, a couple marches and, a, and, and, the, mar and the, the march for jobs in D.C. I don't want that to be me. I don't want my children and my, my legacy to be, well, you know, he, he did pro protest a lot during George Floyd, and he did 
you know, like do a couple of local protests and advocacy groups, like, but you know, like he didn't do any, he didn't do anything in the, outside of that. So fuck him. Like, no, like I, like this is a little self-serving in that regard. But I want to feel like at least I fought for something while I'm on this fucking earth. And a lot of the changes that I want, I'm not even going to see. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. I have solace for that. But just because I'm, I'm a little nihilistic in that doesn't mean I'm not going to advocate for, for things that are better for Americans. Anyway, uh, that was a long spiel. Twitch.tv slash Joe Lewis. The name change that there's two zero, two O's, excuse me. So it's J-O-O-E-L-E-W-I-S. Um, I, I do a lot now. So streaming is a little bit sporadic. Um, but maybe I'll still stick on the prime panel and call some more people white. It was very satisfying. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, but we're going to go to uh, Jason next, and we'll go to Sansa. So, uh, Jason, uh, thank you, thank you uh, for uh, coming through and being part of this as well. Uh, Jason, I, I, uh, you can give uh, your final thoughts as well. Sure, sure. Uh, and, yeah, I appreciate you having me on. I always like coming on the prime panels. Um, I am Jason Society, Jason underscore Society uh, on Twitch. Jason Society, all one word on Twitter. Sorry about the power outage. That's why I dropped off. Uh, my view on this really hasn't changed. I think um, I think voting is uh, is one tool in a tool belt of many tools. Um, are there problems with voting? Hell yes. Should we should we work on changing the system so it works better for us? Hell yes. In the meantime, should we still go vote even if it's for third party, even if it's for no choice? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It doesn't hurt to have your voice heard. It's never going to hurt to have your voice heard. Even if you disagree with what's out there, put it out there, put it out in the ether. Let let somebody, because somebody's counting these votes. Somebody knows what's happening. Somebody can put their finger on the pulse of what's happening. So do that. But you don't necessarily have to fall in line with Dems or Republicans. If you find somebody that's a third party, go for it. Try to build up that shit from the grassroots. And start on your local level. That's a perfect place to start doing this shit. You know, build up from the local level on up, and that's how you make change. I talk a lot about it on my on my stream about how cannabis was has become legalized on in 37 states through a grassroots movement. And I think it's a model that we can look at for how we can make changes in other places, in other areas, and uh, uh, policy specific changes. And uh, we can do that shit together. I do believe that, but it takes a lot of work. And yeah, it's not just going to be at the polls. And, and we should never rely on just voting. Um, that said, uh, thanks again for having me on. Absolutely. And uh, last, uh, but certainly not least, we have our friend, Sanso. Again, I'm, uh, I'm so happy to have you uh, back around, Sanso. Uh, we need to have you uh, on the panel more. Um, I think you're uh, really fun. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that you could uh, join with us. Um, so uh, the, the panel, <laughs> a lot of people came at you uh, pretty hard on this particular panel. Um, and so, which is surprising. I actually didn't uh, see that coming. Um, so I wanted to uh, give you the last spot, especially since, as Joe uh, reminded us, you're a white man, um, and it's only customary. So last word goes to you. Yeah, sometimes I forget. So it's nice to be reminded every once in a while. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, at the end of the day, I I look at the systems that we have in place, and I want to affect change within that system. Um, I I don't know why everyone is talking about uh, voting as just one tool. No one said otherwise. Of course, there's other things that we need to do in order to try and affect change in the world, right? Whether it's charity, whether it's um, some uh, form of like socialist uh, direct action, or um, you know, mutual aid, or anything like that. All these things are really good tools in a tool belt to try and like uh, help people and make their lives better um, while we try to affect change in the electoral system. Um, I, I, I don't know. When, when I look at these things, I want to be able to uh, understand why legislation doesn't get passed. That's why I brought up the, uh, the Senate rules about why we, or how we bring, um, legislation to the floor. I think that's really, really important. Even if we elect someone like Joe Manchin, it's really important to have uh, a majority in the Senate if you want to pass bills, um, or even bring them to the fucking floor. Um, uh, Joe said something about this is why young people don't vote. I would, uh, I, 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 I would agree, but I think that by saying the the system is is inherently flawed to the point where our values aren't being uh, lived out uh, is in in fact contributing to the reason why young people don't vote. What we need to tell young people, what we need to tell everybody is the way that we get legislation passed is, is by voting. When you elect people into office, they put bills forward, they vote for bills. Okay, um, it's not the only thing. 
in in our tool belt, but it's certainly one of the largest. And uh, if you don't understand the systems, then you can't really adequately critique them. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone, uh, we will continue on for open walk on panel. So stick around for that. But yeah, I'm so happy that uh, we had this. I think this was very interesting, very interesting uh, panel. Um, so uh, anyone here can join us for open walk on panel. But if not, that's okay. Thanks for spending your time, your energy, your knowledge and your passion, my community. I know they appreciate just as I do. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Also, uh, oh, no, she already left. Bye. See you later. Gotcha. All right. Jason, so... are you staying for the open panel? Um, we I don't need know. more green on it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna stick around. I I usually don't even stream on Saturdays, so. Um. I'm gonna get food, but I might hop back on. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I need to at least like take take a bathroom break and get something in my belly, and then uh. Yeah, I'll probably hop yeah, take How care long of does yourself. it usually take for oh. the uh, open panel to start? I I haven't been able to um, stream this late for a while, so is it like ten well, minutes? It's 30 pretty minutes? quick. It's pretty it quick, depends. like five ten minutes. Sometimes the, it's a little longer, but the real question is 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 whoops is Prime having a hype train right now? Because if he is, then it's the length of the hype train plus some extra talking. Uh, I got you. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, if you guys are there, I'll probably be there. Catch ya. Holy fuck, dude. Holy shit, dude. Holy fucking goddamn, dude.